Hi. So we'll be starting with the corporate funding sums is in your group three. And from there, if you see the past year papers around 10 to 15 marks have been asked for sums. Now, whatever sums have been there from the very beginning from when this subject started in ICSI till date, I have covered every single sum. Okay. And I can assure you after the video or the lecture, you will find this extremely simple. So just a small brief up about me. I am, I'll be teaching you. I'm Zupair Jangir. I have been teaching in ICSI earlier. I have also taught for the Bombay Stock Exchange. I am also a promoter of a software company and I've authored a book on GST. For CS, I am, uh, in CS, I am your professor for law. Now, in your corporate funding subject, there are different kind types of sums. So I have divided the sums into various types and one will do the entire type. Then we'll go to the next type. Now let's see. First is the letter of credit sums. Then is your commercial paper sums. Then are your sums on right issue. Then are your sums on working capital. Then is your date account convention for debt securities. And lastly, your sums on ICDR. So the questions have come from these topics only. Now let's start with the first one that is your letter of credit. Now first let's understand the concept of letter of credit. If there is an international sale, there is an international sale. Let's say there is a Indian seller. So let's say we are selling the goods. If we have to sell the goods in, for example, USA, there is a buyer in USA. Would you sell and dispatch the goods? Would you send the goods? And this person is going to pay you not in cash. It's not a cash sale. It's a credit sale. It's a credit sale. Tell me one thing. Would you dispatch the goods? and expect that he will pay after a few years, few months, etc. Would you dispatch the goods? No, sir. No. Firstly, in international trade, it is very difficult to enforce a contract. That means if there is a default to go in that country to recover, then file a case, file an attorney in that country and then file a case, it becomes impossible. Okay. So, in international trade today, there is a concept of LCs. That's your letter of credit. Now, what is a letter of credit and how trades today are done? LC is a very common topic, a very common in import export. And these principles which I'm teaching you will be universally or I could say globally applied. Okay, so all countries follow these rules. Now, so how does it work? I don't know the buyer. I tell the buyer, I can't give you a credit sale. What after getting the goods, you don't pay me. So then I tell the buyer that tell your bank, tell the buyer that tell the buyer to give me a LC, a letter of credit, a letter of credit or a guarantee that if the buyer will not pay or will default, the buyer's bank will pay me. Now tell me, is it safe to dispatch the goods? Isn't it safe now to dispatch the goods when there is a bank in a foreign country guaranteeing the payment that if there is a default, they will pay it. Is it safe or no? Yes, sir. Yes, it's absolutely safe now. So it works something like this. This is how the letter of credit system works. The buyer is there. The buyer, he and the seller, they enter into a sale contract. They enter into all the terms and conditions. They exchange the emails. Now is the time of dispatching the goods, sending the goods. So the buyer will contact his bank and tell the bank that issue a LC to the seller's bank. Tell the seller's bank, don't worry, relax. If the buyer will not pay, we will pay. Okay. Now, why will the buyer's bank take the responsibility? Obviously, they must be having a contract among themselves. They, he must have given a security. Okay. And that is why the buyer's bank is giving for me. I am safe. I will send dispatch the goods. This is the 
letter of credit so if i have to explain what is a letter of credit it is a document that guarantees the buyer's payment so i'm i get a guarantee that the buyer's payment will come clear till here now there are sums on these letter of credits there are sums on the letter of credit what kind of sums are there have you heard in your bank if you go do you get a unlimited amount of loan would you get a unlimited amount of loan if you have a credit card do you get a unlimited amount of loan or you can swipe as much as you want or there would be a credit limit put up by the bank obviously the bank would have put a credit limit here also for the bank will put up a limit here a lc limit and this is what they ask you in the exam compute that limit the letter of credit limit the bank guarantee limit so the formula is first i need to find out the total consumption that the person is going to take in the entire year okay so the total consumption that you want to take for example under the lc the buyer wants a lc for xyz amount so this will be the annual consumption annually how much he wants so that figure we will get then we will see the total time period what is the total time period we will see total time period is equal to your lead time plus your transit time plus your usin period divide by 12 so let's understand and then i will tell you the logic of this as well okay first we'll understand the terms first what do you mean by the lead time total time period is equal to lead time plus your transit time plus your usain period what do you mean by a lead time tell me if i go or you punch in a purchase order does it magically come to your go down अगर तुमने परचेज किया इफ यू परचेज समथिंग विल इट ऑटोमेटिकली कम और देर इज सम टाइम फॉर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग फॉर ऑल द गुड्स टू कम ऑब्वियसली सो व्हाट हैपेंस इज द लीड टाइम इज आल्सो समटाइम्स कॉल्ड एज प्रोडक्शन पीरियड इट इज कॉल्ड एज प्रोडक्शन पीरियड व्हाट हैपेंस द टाइम टू प्रोड्यूस द गुड्स एंड टू शिप इट सो द टाइम टेकन फॉर द ऑर्डर placement to shipment so let's say if i have ordered now some things are not ready it takes time to make some machinery i must have ordered raw materials so then they go to purchase so the lead time is a production time how much time has been taken from the order when i place the order to shipment so it needs to be produced and then shipped then once it is put on the ship do you think it will automatically come or there will be a travel period also ship shipping period etc the transit period is the time taken for a ship to arrive at the importer's country the entire travel time they call it as the travel time so for example production period was 1 month transit period was let's say 10 uh, or 5 days and what is the usain period okay simply meaning credit period now when i have purchased the goods when i have purchased the goods the goods have come to me if i make immediate payment it is a credit sale or a cash sale it is a cash sale very good but sometimes in in credit sales they give you a time period a buffer time that it's okay once you get the goods after 2 months you pay to me that is the usain period clear till here now can i say the usain period in 12th we must have studied something called as a bill of exchange have you heard of that a bill of exchange it is nothing but a credit note saying that the against you know xyz purchase has been made and the payment will be made after xyz period so that's your usain bills is a bill of exchange drawn and it is payable after a period okay so we have the lead time we have the transit time we have the usain period you have to add up all the three 
once you add it up you will get your total time period now another uh, figure we need to do the sums is your total annual consumption under letter of credit for example if i am the buyer i require raw materials of 1 lakh do you think the entire 1 lakh in the entire year is it necessary that the entire 1 lakh is taken on credit or some can be cash sale so from the 1 lakh let's say if my annual consumption my annual consumption is 1 lakh units my under lc i might just want to purchase 30000 yes or no rest i would not want to take it under lc i might want to buy under cash so in the calculation we require under annually how many you require under lc that is under credit guarantee how much do you need so that will be your annual consumption period uh, consumption under letter of credit so first how do you compute the letter of credit the letter of credit limit you take your total time period total time period is when you add these three so all those numbers you will add it up then you will multiply it with the total consumption annual consumption you will do under letter of credit divide by 12 i'll give you the logic of this also it's very simple so this on this calculation that is the letter the loc limit the credit limit that the bank will provide now let's look at a few sums and i want you all to solve it up okay so it's very simple i just had to explain you the concept now just see how fast you can solve the sum these are all exam sums and we will see how fast we can solve it okay so first and i want you all to unmute and tell me which figure answer the question okay raw materials purchased is 172 cr raw materials purchased under lc is 69 cr in the formula to compute the lc limit which amount do i require which figure will i take 69 very good so is the annual raw materials annual purchase under lc that is your 69 cr so this is the amount okay so annual consumption under lc it is 69 cr now i require the total time period for total time period i need to add up i need to add up the lead time the transit time and the credit period how much does it come up to so 10 plus 20 is one month and then three months so can i say four months so the calculation will be very simple it's your 69 crores into four months divided by 12 months yes or no on doing from the calc how much figure do you get what is your answer 22.9 crore 22.9 that is your 23 cr so this is your exam sum and this is how simple it is first as per the calculation you require the total time period so you will add up all those limits and you will see annual consumption under lc how much it is there divide by 12 now let's see the next one whether you can do or no okay now this is these are all exam questions okay next one i want you to do first calculate the letter of credit limit so the limit is going to be calculated credit limit so what is the formula we'll see for in the formula raw materials purchase is 250 crores but the raw materials purchased annually under lc is 169 crores which figure will i use in the sums 169 crores okay very good 169 crores will be used in our formula 169 cr into the total time period for total time period i need to add up the lead time transit time and the usain period yes or no so here they have given you the lead time and the transit time together and they have given you usain period so if i add it up how much does it come up, come up to 4 months right 4 months divide by 
So on the Calci, when you do this, how much figure do you get? Fifty-six point three crore. Fifty-six point three CR. Okay. So very simple presentation is also very simple. You give the letter of credit formula, then give the calculation for total time period. How you have done? Generally, the total annual consumption under LC will be given in the sum, and then divide by twelve. Clear till here. Now let's go to the next sum. Now the next sum also we will solve first. Gulab. is a newly incorporated company <clears throat> and it would like to purchase raw materials from domestic as well as other sources under lc so under letter of credit the company wants to purchase domestic sources also they want to buy and from other countries also on the basis of the following information calculate the limit for letter of credit so letter of credit has a formula Limit credit limit has been given. I need to calculate. So very simple. Let's see how we will. What information they have given. First, estimated raw material for purchase is two two forty crores, but the estimated purchase under LC for the financial year is ninety percent of this. That is two one six CR. Which figure will we use in the sums? Two one six. Very good. It will, we will use two one six CR. So they have given that it is two forty into ninety percent. You will get two one six CR. So we require the in sums we will use two one six CR. Now the next they have said uh, of which import for raw materials under LC. Now import under raw materials. Under the letter of credit is thirty percent. Rest, if this is import, the rest must be what domestic in the sum they have given. Yes or no? Because they are making not only import purchases. Okay, they are making under letter of credit. They are also making domestic purchases, right? And then they are doing from other countries. So, can I say two one six CR out of this two one six CR? Under import, it is how much? Thirty percent. That is how much? Thirty percent of this is how much? Thirty percent of two one six. They have already given you. It is sixty four point eight CR. Till here it is clear. That means under domestic. Under domestic, it would be how much? Seventy percent. That's how much. If you remove seventy percent of two one six CR, one fifty one point two crore. One fifty one point two CR. You are saying right? Okay. So it will be two one six into point seventy. So one fifty one point two. Very good. Now, next we go to see what have they given. So can I say I got my annual consumption under LC? Yes or no? For domestic and for credit, annual consumption I got for this also for domestic separately and for uh, in import I got. Now we require <coughs> the time frame. For domestic, they have given you. So let's say they have given you the lead time, transit time, and use in period. For domestic, we'll calculate first. So this is the domestic part. For this, they have given you. So what was the calculation? One fifty one point two CR into I add up all these one, two, three. So three months divide by twelve months. What is your answer? Thirty seven point eight crore. So it is your Thirty-seven point eight crores. So let's see if that is correct. Okay. So your answer is how much? Thirty-seven point eight crores. Very good. Now if I go for the other one, if I go now this day how they have presented it. The annual consumption is two forty. Out of that ninety percent is only under LC. So we get two one six. Then they bifurcated this into. Uh, 
your foreign letter of credit and your inland so this is your domestic and this is your import on this they got the figure you know by 30 70 they got this and this then they added the number of months here they got now if i see in the other one okay now for the import category for the import category what will be the calculation very simple it will be 64.8 cr into now i'll calculate for this import it's two months two months and four months how much does it come up to eight eight upon 12 yes or no eight months divided by 12 how much does it come up to 43.2 crore 43.2 cr okay let's see if that is correct that's absolutely correct fine so this was the last attempt in june 2022 sum so very simple you know the formula and you can do those sums okay now coming to the next one which is about commercial paper this is the type 2 now type 1 was formula based credit limit had to be calculated as per the formula now let's see the type 2 that is your commercial paper first what do you mean by commercial paper let's understand if i say that an instrument is issued for short term it is a money market instrument or a capital market instrument for short term instruments money, money market money market so the regulator becomes rbi okay and it is maximum for one year so commercial paper is a short term instrument first this is clear commercial paper is a short term instrument when i say short term means maximum it can be issued for how much period one, one year. year one year so the maturity period if a company wants to issue commercial paper and raise money in short term basis they can take the money minimum is seven days seven days they can issue commercial paper and after seven days they will redeem it with interest if they want they can have a you know as many days maximum is 365 days now commercial papers are issued generally by high end companies are issued by good net worth companies or companies which have a good net worth and when the, these companies with a good net worth wants to issue on i want to raise funds on short term basis agar a company hai if there is a company usko short term requirement hai it has a short term requirement so it will issue commercial paper raise the money pay the interest and then close the redeem the instrument till here it is clear when i say companies which have a good net worth that means they have a good credit limit that means how much so corporates which have at least a net worth of 4 cr and a rating of p2 by chrysal or a2 you know depending on which credit rating agency but of chrysal p2 or equivalent of any other agency they will be allowed to raise and issue commercial paper so good companies when they want to when i say good means they have a net worth of 4 cr and have got a good rating also up to max minimum rating they have got of p2 now every chrysal uh, every uh, rating agency has uh, different rating matrix different rating uh, numbers so but two level whichever is there so a2 of another one or grade 2 of another one anything they have this rating now tell me when a company is there which already has a net worth of this much and good credit rating do you think we will force them that no no you have to issue secured or we can say okay fine you are big enough player you can even issue unsecured what do you think So can you repeat? So my question is, it's a good company. This good company will be forced that you have to, when you're issuing CP, you have to issue against some property only or you can issue unsecured also. 
because they already have a good net worth they have a good rating so it is safe when they even if they go for unsecured uh, they are issuing all of this on unsecured basis yes or no that is no security they have to provide so in cp these cps are unsecured they are not backed by any instrument they are not backed by any property till here it is clear yes sir why because law says that they are already have a good net worth it's fine even if they go for unsecured so the feature or the one of the um, you know features or i could say the characteristics of a cp is that it is a unsecured promissory note issued by credit worthy companies and they borrow on short term basis concept clear so in india instruments which have been issued with a view to able high rated borrowers to have raise money for short term borrowings okay can go for this and the issues for one commercial paper can be issued in multiples of 5 lakhs clear till here so you cannot have a uh, uh, investment when i'm issuing someone has to invest minimum 5 lakhs to get a cp till here it is clear and it is traded also of 5 lakh rupees so small retail players will not come here because the instrument itself is for 5 lakhs or in multiples of 5 lakhs 10 15 20 25 and will be traded also in 5 5 lakhs only clear till here another feature of a commercial paper is it is sold at a discount to its face value and redeemed at par so if the face value face value is 1 lakh okay so it will be issued at discount that means it can be issued at 95000 issue price so when i am issuing it you all will pay how much 95 i am issuing na this cp so the issue price is 95 so you all will give me 95000 so it is issued at discount can i say this yes or no it is issued at a discount from its face value and it will be redeemed at par it will be redeemed at 1 lakh rupees so what is your gain what is the gain 5000 rupees 5000 clear till here very simple so the gain to the investor is the difference between the face value and the issue price now a few more theory on this then we'll get into the sums of cp first if i am the company i am a you know credit worthy company i have fulfilled all the ratings now i have to go and raise money on short term basis so i will have to hire a issuing and paying agent so the agent will be there which will where which will manage the entire issue process so your only a scheduled bank can act as a ipa for cp that means uh let's say if there is a commercial paper that i want to issue you will come and subscribe to it yes or no so you will do the subscription uh, allotment procedure refund procedure all those redemption procedure all of that have to hire a agent yes or no a agent who will help me issue cp and uh, redeem it also pay it also so only a scheduled bank can act as a ipa a so a scheduled bank is someone uh, a bank which is there in schedule 2 of rbi act so scheduled banks are there rbi has mentioned that these are are mentioned in our schedule you can these are you know you can take you can appoint them as ipas next now you all unmute and tell me is it necessary to issue cps in a uh, electronic form only like people can subscribe it only in electronic form or physical paper uh, physical form also can be issued like how we had share certificates can we issue that way or it will only be in dmat form what do you think quickly in electronic okay very good so let's read it so first uh from with effect from 30th june 2001 banks if fis you know uh, pension funds etc are required 
to make fresh investments and hold CPs only in DMAT form. Clear till here? So they have told the banks that please make issue only in dematerialized form. However, for others and those who were there before 2001, it is an option given to the investor and the issuing company before this, okay, before 2001, option was given that even the issuer can issue on physical form and even the subscriber, if he wants, he can purchase it on physical form. Okay, so issue holding everything was allowed in not only in DMAT form, but also in physical form. However, it has been, they are encouraged to prefer dematerialized form. Clear till here? Okay, now coming to the sums part. Now coming to what kind of sums have been asked from here. So the sums are, the sums are asked on find the rate of return. What you have to find? The rate of return for an investor on a CP. They are also called as bond valuation or yield to maturity rate of return. I will show you. It's a very, very simple concept. Okay. First, finding the rate of return and the formula first I'll tell you then in the sums I'll explain you the logic also. So the yield to maturity also called as rate of return is equal to face value minus the issue price divided by the issue price. This issue price will be the net price that is if any uh, commission was paid etc. So the net figure will come here net issue price will come here into 100 into 365 upon n is the number of days or number of maturity of this instrument. So I'll explain when doing the sum. Okay. So you don't have to learn the formula. It's only lo pure logic that is involved. First question of December 2020. From the following calculate the effective interest cost per annum to ABC limited, which is planning a commercial paper issue. Now you have to tell me the rate of return and I will show you the very simple logic of it. Okay. First it is issued at discount and redeemed at par. Yes or no? It is issued. So just normally just to explain you the formula also, if I have to calculate the rate of return on this CP, can I say what, how much is the gain to the investor quickly, please unmute your tell cells do the calculation what is the uh, return just in number form can it i has a how much uh, 2650 very good so what we did is logically is very simple it's your what is the gain to the investor he is investing 97350 and it will be redeemed at par. So he will get 1 lakh. So the gain to the investor is 1 lakh minus your 97,350. Yes or no? Is the gain. Agreed? Now this gain he has got that is your 2000. When you subtract this, you will get 2650. This gain the investor got by investing how much amount rate of return I want to find. So the return on investment. So he got 2650 by investing how much? How much did he pay for it? How much? Very good. So he paid uh, 97,350 and he got 2650. Okay. So can I say this was the face value minus the issue price divided by the issue price. Now another logic. Okay. Now just the furtherance of the formula, this return, what we calculated. Okay. Into hundred, whenever I do, I get percentage. Yes or no. This, if I multiply it, I'll come to know the percentage this percentage I have got doing in the entire year calculation, right? But if I say this return, I have only got in three months because 
वॉट इज द मेच्योरिटी पीरियड वॉट इज द मेच्योरिटी पीरियड इट इज थ्री मंथ्स सो आई हैव गॉट दिस रिटर्न इन थ्री मंथ्स टाइम पीरियड ये सो नो सो आई वॉन्ट टू नो फॉर द यर हाउ मच सो नॉर्मली वी से वी गॉट इट इन थ्री मंथ्स सो फॉर द यर हाउ मच सो दिस इज फॉर थ्री मंथ्स सो दे फोर फॉर ट्वेल्व मंथ्स हाउ मच सो कैन आई से इट इज इन टू वॉट इज अ फॉर्मुला इन टू this return when you calculate how much you get 1 lakh minus 97 350 okay divided by 97 350 okay now into 100 if i do i come to know it is 2.7 but this 2.7 i have just got in this 2.7 i have got in 2.722 I have got it in three months. I want to know for twelve months how much because any time the percentage is shown, rate of return is shown yearly per annum. So this into twelve, so this will be into twelve upon three. Understood till here. So twelve will always be the years because we always calculate yearly. Okay, upon the n is the maturity date or the tenure date. so you get the further answer so you come to know that the rate of return is 10.89% till here it is clear now let's see the next one i want you to try so your june 2022 msc would like to issue commercial paper calculate the effective interest rate of commercial paper from the following data so let's read the question first the face value is 10 lakh rupees the sale price is 9 lakh 91000 maturity period is 120 days brokerage and other charges is 2.50% consider one year as 360 days so first as per our thing we will do your face value Minus your issue price divided by issue price into your three sixty upon n into hundred. Okay. Okay. Upon three sixty upon n. Now, in this, the face value is given to you as ten lakh rupees. now issue price is your 9 lakh 91000 but whenever they give you any kind of charges okay so this charges should first be deducted that means if i am making a sale of 90 9 lakh 91000 means the investment i am getting 9 lakh 91000 but out of that still amount is going to go in brokerage and other charges so in hand i'm going to get less i'll have to deduct the brokerage and other charges now this brokerage and other charges will be of face value okay so whenever they give you anything as a percentage it will always be of on the face value so if we see your uh, 10 lakhs into 2.50 percent your 10 lakhs into 2.5 percentage So it comes up to twenty five thousand. So twenty five thousand minus nine lakh ninety one thousand. It will give you nine lakh sixty six thousand. Nine lakh sixty six thousand divided by nine lakh sixty six thousand. For a simple reason that in our hand we'll have we didn't get nine lakh ninety one. We have to remove the brokerage and other charges. okay once this is there then i will do into 360 divided by n n is the number of days maturity days that's 120 so when you do this calculation how much do you get 10 lakh minus 9 lakh 96000 divided by 9 lakh 96000 okay into 360 Divide by one twenty, and into hundred, you will get 
टेन पॉइंट फाइव फाइव हे फाइव सिक्स पर्सेंट टिल युअर इट इज क्लियर टेन पॉइंट फाइव फाइव और फाइव सिक्स पर्सेंटेज ओके नाउ कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट वन दैट इज योर अदर टाइप दैट इज योर बैंक गैरेंटी कॉन्सेप्ट now as we saw this is also similar to letter of credit but letter of credit is mainly when we use we mean it is for international trade it's more common in international trade so now let's see your uh, bank guarantee questions now what is a bank guarantee the bank is standing as a guarantor as a surety for someone that don't worry if he doesn't fulfill his obligation if he doesn't pay the money i will pay okay so there will be three parties in a bank guarantee in guarantees always there are three parties one is the guarantor here it is the bank okay it's a bank guarantee so bank is acting as a guarantor or a surety now it is taking surety of someone's performance so that person who is applying for the bank guarantee the debtor borrower etc the purchaser or any person called as the applicant he will ask the bank that please give uh, xyz person a guarantee that if i don't pay you will pay on my behalf so the beneficiary is called maybe it could be any person it could be the seller of goods so seller is getting a guarantee from the bank that don't worry you sell the goods he on credit sale he will pay you the money so bank guarantee is an agreement between three parties the bank the applicant and the beneficiary so if i see in a typical sale transaction in a typical uh, in a typical sale contract how it works so abc limited uh, xyz limited is supplying raw materials but when it is supplying raw materials is getting very scared that i don't know whether abc will pay or no okay so uh, xyz limited will supply the goods to raw, the, the the raw materials uh xyz limited supplies the raw materials and is asking the other party to provide a financial security for these goods and that a bank will stand as a guarantor between these two parties so in the exam what kind of question comes very simple first you tell me will the bank give unlimited guarantee yes or no or the bank will also prepare that this is the guarantee limit that i am giving so let's see what it is so again certain uh, formula based and very simple logic i'll explain you first the assessment of the limit of bank guarantee we are going to assess the limit of bank guarantee first a outstanding bank guarantees let's say if my company is there my company is there i have already told the bank that give xyz person guarantee so i will see how much guarantees have been given on my behalf so let's say of 10 cr guarantee has already been given this is outstanding so the bank so this guarantee given by the bank is still going on if i default the bank will have to pay second during doing business i find that i need more guarantee to be given so if during the entire year if i find that i need the bank to give on my behalf on you know my behalf i want the bank to give more one two guarantees so let's say of 5 uh, 3 cr i have told the bank that give additional guarantee so then i will come to know okay fine we are we are calculating how much guarantee is standing for you so 10 cr already passed new one 3 cr in the year then less maturity estimated maturity or cancellation of bank guarantee now let's understand what is this concept if for example i have given a guarantee i told the bank that give me a guarantee of 3 cr on my behalf or 2 cr on my behalf and now i have successfully performed the contract and the contract is closed so isn't the guarantee also closed yes or no 
सो देन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज कैंसिलेशन ऑफ द बैंक गारंटी वेन आई हैव फुलफिल द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और बिटवीन अस विद द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज सक्सेसफुली डन और द मेच्योरिटी हैज बीन डन देन द बैंक विल से ओके फाइन दिस गेट्स रिलीज दिस मच गेट्स कैंसिल्ड यू हैव परफॉर्म्ड यू हैव पेड uh or whatever he has relieved you he has said don't uh, you not needed so you come to cancel the guarantee let's say you cancel the guarantee of 1 cr you told 1 cr guarantee is over now you cancel that so in net how much bank guarantee is there can anyone calculate and tell me net how much bank guarantee is uh, going on so outstanding plus new minus cancellation yes or no so it comes up to can you calculate and tell me 12 cr very very simple outstanding plus new minus whatever has been cancelled so this is the total bank guarantee that is going on for the company now let's look at the june 2022 question now i want you all to answer it and then we will see what is the correct answer question uh june 2022 moon limited makes an application moon limited makes an application for bank guarantee limit for the year 21 22 with the following data to pqr limited <clears throat> to pqr bank limited so moon is going to the bank and saying that uh, calculate how much bank guarantees will be there this is my facts fact sheet so you all are there in the bank you all calculate and tell outstanding is already 95 lakhs bank guarantee required for this year i require more additional for 115 and during the year i feel that there will be a cancellation of bank guarantee for whatever reason of 65 lakhs can you tell me the net bank guarantee that is there so what i will do can you tell me the figures 95 lakhs plus 115 lakhs minus 65 lakhs yes or no 90 by already there 150 more needed and 65 will go away will be cancelled so what is the total 145 145 let's see very good so this is the exam question this is how you have to present outstanding plus additional needed less the uh, whatever is going to be cancelled or relieved and the requirement is 145 lakhs now the next one uh, again this is a december 2021 question Alpha Meter Technology Limited has a outstanding guarantee of 92 CR. Outstanding is 92 CR. During the year, the company has given new guarantees of 8 CR. Income tax assessment proceedings have concluded. The department has released the bank guarantees of 21 CR, which the company had provided earlier. So what happened? There was an income tax case going on against me. in that the whatever the officer had said to get a bank guarantee of 21 cr i said okay fine i'll give then i win the case so that guarantee will get released yes or no then they will say now you don't need to give any bank guarantee whatever you've given you won the case you don't have to deposit anything that much gets released that much will get cancelled so good for me and the department has demanded an additional guarantee so this is another has department has demanded a additional guarantee of 2 cr towards interest of uh, 15 16 for which the company had provided a guarantee of 14 crores in the previous year so what will be the calculation first 92 cr yes or no outstanding guarantee plus new guarantee will be added 8 cr then this much got released so minus 21 cr yes or no and additional guarantee was demanded of 2 cr so again i will have to add 2 cr towards the interest that for you will pay the interest that's why I give a guarantee bank guarantee for which the company had provided guarantee of 14 crores in the 
previous year so this is not outstanding anymore this is of the previous past time must have given so what is the total when i do to this 81 cr okay so let's see when you do this whether it is correct or no so your answer is 81 cr so this is how you present computation of the bank guarantee okay limit for the year this much is outstanding this much is additional this much is released and this much was additional again asked and when you add up and subtract you will get 81 cr concept clear and in the notes you can go and explain that 92 cr just you can just mention why you added or subtracted now let's go to the next one now we are doing the next type of sums which are for working capital sums now before we do the working capital sums it's important to understand what do you mean by working capital now working capital is the day to day capital that the company needs to run the business that is to purchase raw materials to pay the salary for any kind of expenses which are there okay so this is your working capital is to work or the to finance the day to day operations of the company is called as working capital tell me uh, it measures the liquidity of the company how much cash does it have how much cash equivalence does it have measuring the short term health of the company for example you tell me can i say that i have a building i have lot of working capital should that be counted can i say if i have a building i have a lot of working capital yes, no see building is your fixed assets fixed assets are assets which will are not supposed to be sold and get realized within one year so this will not provide me liquidity i will not sell my building to pay off salary i require day to day funds so what are the day to day funds they which i have all my assets which can be converted into cash within one year are called as my current assets till your it is clear till your it is clear so yes. all all those assets which can be converted into cash now what can we can which are those assets which can be converted into cash the most famous are what debtors stock debtors and last cash so my raw materials i my finished goods i know i can sell it and get money from there so within one year i will get debtors my you know those who have borrowed from me they are going to pay me within one year cash let's see if i say that stock debtors cash when i add it up i have 1 lakh rupees i have how much 1 lakh rupees so can i say that i have 1 lakh rupees which i will get 1 lakh uh, cash which i will be able to reuse it in the day to day functioning of the company so my working capital is 1 lakh rupees but if i tell you i also have some liabilities which i have to pay within one year for example outstanding salary outstanding expenses outstanding anything i also have creditors who i also have to pay uh, creditors or bills payable okay all this is there or if i have a short term borrowing short term loan and i have to pay off within one year so can i say i have these liabilities and let's say these liabilities are of 75000 so what is the net working capital that i have to use it in the business how much is the net working capital it is 25000 so what do you do current assets less your current liabilities you will get your net working capital as uh, i want you all to unmute and tell should i have a net positive working capital or net negative uh, should i have a positive working capital or negative working capital is good for the company positive obviously positive because this is a positive thing that means i have more funds and i have funds to finance in the business but if i say that this is 175 if i say that the liabilities are 175 then i will be i will not have money to fund the day to day operation and that is called as negative working capital so no ma manager will want to have a negative working capital so let's see the sums 
for this are very simple okay let's see first okay now the balance sheet is given this is the question of december 2020 balance sheet of x company has been given and its statement of changes in the financial position is given on the year 31st march 2019 are presented below now this is the balance sheet given assets and liability i am concerned with working capital they tell you to find out the working capital so working capital on the asset side is your stock data's cash inventory amounts uh, that is your stock inventory is your stock amounts receivable is your data's and this is your cash okay accumulated depreci uh, depreciation equipment land these are all uh, fixed assets clear till here so can you tell me what is my total current assets when you add up all this you will get your current assets okay and if i see my current liabilities my current liabilities will be what amount payable that is your creditors and that's it so what is the working capital that i get two three seven zero plus one three double zero plus five thirty and your current liability is two one four zero working capital is equal to your current asset less your current liabilities how much does it come up to quickly two zero six zero comes up to 2060 okay now this is as on 31st march 2018 yes or no now a uh, year they've said that balance sheet of x limited has been given of 30 uh, of 2018 and changes in financial position of 2019 are prescribed below so they have also given you the other where they've given you the changes in working capital calculate the working capital of 2019 this we calculated is of what 2018 we calculated in 2019 we will see what is it they just given you a statement of changes for this year so we see your they've given you increase in working capital is 340 that's it so they just giving you the direct increase in working capital so can i say this plus how much was it 340 is equal to your working capital for 2019 yes or no how much does it come up to 2400 2400 okay so let's see what is the answer so this is for five mark question okay so you can present it saying uh, the change is first two four double zero is stock status cash minus your uh your pay bills which were there you will get your working capital then the changes you add it up and you will get your working capital for 2019 now coming to certain committees which have been given uh, for working capital now let me explain what is the scenario here the government of india have set up various committees to determine how much working capital loan should be given ki working capital loans kitna dena chahiye you have come for a loan for day to day operations for working capital you require loan so these committees they have come and they all have given various methods to assess that you know for banks this mainly methods are for banks that these banks will follow they will apply and they will say this is the maximum working capital loan that we can give you understood till here so three important committees that are there the nayak committee tandon committee sums come on these two and chore committee let's see the first committee that is important from exam point of view also that is your nayak committee it's called as turnover based committee very simple it's also called as turnover method why 
बिकॉज दिस इज वॉट एवर इज द टर्न ओवर वॉट एवर इज योर कंपनी इज टर्न ओवर ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट इज अज्यूम टू बी वर्किंग कैपिटल दैट यू विल रिक्वायर टिल योर इट इज क्लियर हाउ मच एवर वर्किंग हाउ मच एवर सेल्स इज देर ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ दैट इज वॉट वी बिलीव इज वॉट इज अ वर्किंग कैपिटल दैट यू विल रिक्वायर तो जितना भी तुम्हारा सेल्स है टर्न ओवर है उसका ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट हम लोग मानेंगे कि आपको वर्किंग कैपिटल की जरूरत है उतना वर्किंग कैपिटल आपको रिक्वायर्ड होगा अब जब लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल अगर एक लाख टर्न ओवर है इफ टर्न ओवर इज वन लैख कैन यू टेल मी अकॉर्डिंग टू नायक कमिटी हाउ मच इज द वर्किंग कैपिटल ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड दैट इज ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट इज द वर्किंग कैपिटल रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द कंपनी नाउ आउट ऑफ दिस ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड दे आर सींग हाउ मच लोन इज टू बी गिवेन दे आर सींग आउट ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट फाइव परसेंट शुड बी प्रमोटर्स कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन द बॉरवर हिमसेल्फ शुड रिमूव फाइव परसेंट सो मैक्सिमम वर्किंग कैपिटल लोन दैट कैन बी गिवेन इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियर बाय द बैंक फाइव परसेंट ही नीड्स टू गेट ट्वेंटी परसेंट वी विल गिव सो इट विल मीट अप इज ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट रिक्वायरमेंट सो इन दिस सम हाउ मच एज अ बोरोवर हैव टू गेट फ्रॉम हिज ओन पॉकेट फाइव थाउजेंड फाइव थाउजेंड परफेक्ट ठीक है नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दिस टर्न ओवर मेथड दिस मेथड इज असेसिंग द वर्किंग कैपिटल रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ नायक कमिटी it was headed by pr nayak examine the adequacy of uh, institutional credit to ss sector and gave its recommendation so mostly it was for the small scale sector which was there but for non ssi also he has said when this uh, logic should be applied when this method should be applied so it has said that this calculation should be done under this method bank credit for working capital purposes for borrowers requiring fund based limits up to 5 cr for ssi borrowers and 2 cr in case of other borrowers under this method bank credit for working capital for borrowers requiring fund based limits up to 5 cr is for ssi and for non uh, if for others it is 2 cr may be assessed at 25% of projected annual turnover so they have said for ssi up to 5 cr and for uh, non ssi up to 2 cr they have said that the credit limit is being given now this is when when they require loans up to 5 cr or loans up to 2 cr then this method will be applied what we need to know is 25% is the, of the turnover is there working capital uh, requirement out of that 5% you have to get now one very very important part okay so which i'll come to it in short time this method is applicable only when ssi seek to borrow up to 5 cr and non ssi try to borrow 2 cr then this method will be applied now this is very important and generally uh students are unable to understand this point okay since the bank finances only the intended to support the need based requirement so how much you need that much only we are going to finance the bank will not give you more how much ever you need it's a need based requirement and need we have assessed is 25% hum log ne dhoond liya ke 25% jitna hi aapko chahiye the available net working capital is more than 5% so let's say if the borrower already has more than 5% so we will only give the balance amount as loan because it is only to meet the requirement of 25% means what let's understand 25% is the working capital need of the company yes or no yes or no yes sir yes out of that borrower has to get how much 20% Borrower will get how much? Five percent. Five percent, okay. And balance twenty percent can be given as loan by the bank. Now, if the borrower already has or he has himself brought in more than five percent, okay. 
सो दैट मीन्स ही हैज बॉट लेट से टेन परसेंट टेन परसेंट ही हैज बॉट टेन परसेंट सो वॉट इज द बैलेंस नीड ऑफ द कंपनी फिफ्टीन परसेंट सो द बैंक विल गिव लोन ओनली अप टिल फिफ्टीन परसेंट कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियर यस so this is what they are saying that if you already have net positive working capital that means you already have this much amount then your need is only 15% and we will only fund to meet this need so this is what they try to say in a little difficult language okay since the bank only finance the intended support the need based requirement of the borrower if the available net working capital net working capital means what he has a net amount okay net surplus of more than 5% then this will be taken to calculate and assess the bank finance so we lose not 5 but this percent whatever he's got more than 5 to minus from this to use it and then say how much it will be given so i can say that the working capital limit is okay will be assessed subtracting these two now let's see from the sums first i will take a very simple sum then we'll go into the detailed important questions also like a little more difficult question turnover based if the projected turnover is 36000 if the projected sales is 36000 as per the turnover method 25% is the of 36000 will be 9000 is the working capital requirement yes or no Out of this twenty-five percent, that is nine thousand, the borrower himself has to get five percent. Okay, so out of this five percent will have to be the contribution, and balance the bank will finance. Till here it is clear. So yes. this this is the total amount. Twenty-five percent is the total working capital need. 20% of this is the bank will provide and 5% is what you need to get clear so if you add up these two you will come to know that it is 25% clear yes sir hmm? now coming to the next one now this is the question let's see if you can answer okay you can mark it as important because this is tricky okay don't think it's very simple 20 because normally students will ask 25% 5 20 minus no pay attention to this example so that you get full 5 marks in your exam question is there projected annual sale is 8 cr net working capital is 52 lakhs calculate the working capital limit as per turnover method calculate and tell sale amount is 8 cr out of this 8 cr we will believe that how much is the working capital need of the company 25% that comes up to how much 2 cr 2 cr so 2 cr till here we are right now this is the need the borrower has to get 5% but they have also said that the net working capital that is net working capital means the borrower already has this much amount yes or no current asset minus current liability means it is net means he already has 52 lakhs with him yes or no yes he already has 52 lakhs so let's see what it, we are going to do the bank will say that listen the borrower normally would have to get 5% the borrower in this would have to get 5% how much is 5% 40 lakh hmm? is 40 lakhs but already this guy already has how much in his pocket 52 lakh 52 lakh so out of 2 cr ideally he had to get 40 lakhs but he already has a margin he already has a buffer he already has a net positive working capital of 
so then we will take he has more than five percent yes or no so then we will use this figure for the calculation and we'll say listen he requires two cr out of this 52 lakhs he already has so net is how much 148 lakhs 148 lakhs so this is your final answer okay so again turnover was 800 lakhs 8 cr limit turnover requirement is 2 cr 200 lakhs out of this 200 lakhs the bank 20% uh, is the bank 60 lakhs would have given and 5% the borrower would have got 40 lakhs but more than 5% he has got he already has 52 lakhs in his pocket so then we will say wait a minute out of 200 lakhs we will subtract this 52 lakhs concept clear yes so out of the requirement since it is more than the margin that he is required to get we will take that for calculation and we will say listen this guy already has 52 so we will only give him the balance amount as working capital loan concept clear okay so now we'll be doing the june 2021 question it gives you the sales the creditors the bank borrowing the current assets and it says assess the working capital requirement as per nayak committee that's your turnover committee now let's understand very simple they've given you the creditors and they've given you a current assets so current assets less your current liabilities you will come to know your net working capital current assets is given to you as 7 lakh 40 thousand less your uh, creditors have been given as 3 lakhs and they've also taken bank borrowings okay so in the note we can write because normally only short term loans will come here now they've not mentioned whether it is a short term loan or a long term loan so you can mention a note that it is uh, assumed that the short term the bank borrowing is a short term borrowing so uh, if we add it up considering this is also short term so you'll come to know it is how much six lakhs thirty thousand so when you subtract these two how much do you come to uh, how much figure do you get one lakh ten thousand one lakh ten thousand so one lakh ten thousand the company already has because it is their net amount that they have in their pocket now let's see as per turnover uh, nayak committee what it is so projected sales is 20 lakhs okay so 20 lakhs is your projected sales 25 percent of this is We'll believe that they require this much for working capital. How much does it come up to? How much is 25% uh, of? 5 lakhs. 5 lakhs. So 5 lakh is their need. Out of this 5 lakhs, we want that the borrower should only get 5%. So how much is 5% of 20 lakhs? 1 lakh. 1 lakh. But he has, he already has a margin. He already has a net working capital he already has of 1 lakh 10 thousand so that means he already has 1 lakh 10 thousand with him so he has more than 5 percent so we will say that he requires 5 lakhs minus 1 lakh 10 thousand yes or no so whatever is the working capital requirement out of that the person already has 1 lakh 10 so how much more does he need Three lakh ninety thousand. How much? Three lakh ninety thousand. So this much the bank will finance. Okay. So three lakh ninety thousand. So they've done the same thing. First they found the net working capital. They've added the current assets, current liabilities. They came to know that they have a net that is more funds. They have a one lakh ten. Okay. Then they found out the minimum working capital that they uh, need that is 25% or 20 lakhs 
then they said that the con- borrower's contribution is how much one lakh but the borrower has already has one lakh ten thousand with him okay networking capital so then we will finance out of five lakhs we'll subtract what he already has and for three lakh ninety thousand which is short of working capital that we will finance or give him next again of nayak committee let's see uh Sumax so Kanda Printers approached the bank. Okay, so this printer limited approached the bank for working capital facilities. The projected annual turnover for the company is this much. So we know that the sales is of one lakh eighty five thousand. Sorry, it is of one crore eighty five. Lacks. Okay, so this much is the sale. Now explain the assessment of the working capital required by NIAC committee and compute the working capital finance the which can be extended by the bank. So very simple. They are asking us to explain. So we will explain that twenty five percent is there out of that five percent he has to give. So I think it's a theory question. Okay. very well we can explain so out of this figure 25% the company will finance the is the need of working capital need is or uh, 25% of that the borrower is supposed to get 5% <laughs> and the difference is the maximum permissible bank finance still here it is clear yes sir yeah so very simple out of the sales 25% is there 5% he has to get balance 20% the bank will give so it's very simple you could just go to see the sales 25% is the working capital need 5% the borrower will get and 20% the bank will finance if the borrower is getting more than 5% then the bank will finance only the difference amount the lesser amount now coming to the next type of committee okay which is your tandon committee now tandon committee was set up to find out that the how much is the maximum permissible bank finance that can be given for working capital needs means working capital ke liye for working capital maximum kitna finance kar sakte hain how much finance maximum can be given for working capital needs so they have divided it into three methods how many methods tandon committee has given three methods first method they said to find out the maximum permissible bank finance you take current assets less your current liabilities 75% of it so we'll say that how much do you require for working capital needs so the maximum amount we can finance is current assets less your current liabilities you find that amount 75% of that can maximum be given in the second method you take 75% of current assets then whatever figure comes you less with your current liability still here it is clear in the first method first you subtract both of them and then take 75% in the second method first you take 75% of current assets and the balance you finance third method you take current from current assets you have to remove your core current assets so it's just like the second method only but in the current assets you are removing core current assets now what is core current assets it is the bare minimum which every month the company needs now tell me one thing does the company needs working capital equally on all the months sub months mein same working capital chahiye <coughs> when there is a season period peak t period it might go more right when there is diwali sale etc so the sales increases but there is one point where the main bare minimum will always be required in all the months that's your core working capital as the core current assets that has to first be subtracted then whatever amount you get it will be 75% of that less your current liabilities so this is the three methods you need to know take a screenshot write it down 
now this three methods the tandon committee had said that the first one is for blue chip companies generally they have said that the first one is for how, which companies blue chip companies the first one the second method is for normal companies in normal companies which are there and the third method third method is for loss making companies or uh, your sick companies till here it is clear is this clear yes or no yes sir yeah now let's understand why why is first method blue for blue chip that is your best companies reliance startups etc because if you go to see when you apply the first method you will get more amount of loan and in the last method you will get the least amount of working capital loan so let's take an example and you will get an idea keep your calcis ready if your current assets is 100 your current liability is 30 okay can you tell me in the first case how much loan will you get 100 minus 30 is 70 75 percent of 70 is how much? 52.7. 52.7. So here you will get 52.7. This much amount of loan they will get. But in the same scenario, if I uh, put uh, this second scenario, okay. Now, seventy-five percent of current assets—that's point seventy-five of hundred. Whatever you do, minus thirty. Then, how much do you get? Forty-five. Forty-five. So, did you see that you they ended up getting a lesser loan? Current asset current liability was same, but because of this formula, in the second method, you are getting less amount of loan. So, this is the maximum finance that the bank will give you. And in the third uh, method, they are also saying that let's say the core current assets is ten, the company always requires ten, so then it will be zero point seven five minus hundred minus ten minus thirty. That comes up to how much? Thirty seven point five. Thirty seven point five. Concept clear? So in first method you get the maximum loan. That is why they applied for good companies. for average companies they apply the second method and for uh, sick companies they apply the third method concept perfectly clear yes or no now so just write down the formula then then it is very simple to solve the sums okay now maximum permissible bank finance by tandon committee So this is a theory. Same thing which I have told you, they have given here. We will directly go to the sum. And also one more thing, when in the second method also when you do the calculation, they say that the minimum current ratio which works out after doing the sums etc. You will come to know that is one point three three is to one. So this is the ratio. In the second method comes up to one point three three is to one. Okay, current assets to current liability ratio. This they have given. third in third method it will come up to minimum current ratio under this method works out to be 1.5 to 1 just you have to remember this now then the theory of the last third method is chore committee according to this committee under the uh, chairmanship of shri k b chore they said that up for the cash credit system very simple he just said that apply the second method of tandon committee for normal company which rule is there apply that so even if they ask you for chore committee okay you uh, will apply they don't have given a separate formula or something they've just said that the committee recommended assessment of working capital requirements as per the second method of tandon committee concept clear Yes. So in this committee also, I just have to apply the second. Ah, uh, this. Can any anyone remembers what was the formula? 
zero point seven five percent of the current asset minus current liability. Perfect. Clear. Now let's do the sums and see how it is goes. Now this is the sums. Now they have said, find out the maximum permissible bank borrowing. What is the maximum amount of borrowing that the bank will give? A uh, borrowing that can be done under the Tandon Committee methods. So you they have given you the existing current assets, existing current liabilities. Very simple. The current assets are how much? Raw materials, work in progress, finished goods, receivable, other than this. When you add up all this, you will get. Or uh, fourteen lakh eighteen thousand. Current liabilities also they've given you is fourteen lakhs. Okay, and the core current assets they've given you is three lakh eighty thousand. Very simple, yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Now in this the current liabilities they've given you a uh, four lakhs, two lakhs, and uh eight lakhs. Now again. one more important thing is the bank borrowings okay the will be excluded from the current liabilities now pay attention why and you tell me whether you understood it or no now what am i calculating i'm calculating the maximum permissible bank finance yes or no if yes, sir. if i come to know that the maximum permissible bank borrowing is 20 lakhs as per the method okay as per the method i'll come to know that the max is 20 lakhs so then we will see that how much is eligible loan can be given eligible borrowing how much it is there so if they already have existing loans like after calculating the maximum permissible bank finance then we will say that how much loan they have already taken so then we will say out of the maximum finance that could have been given is 20 lakhs out of this the existing loan is of 8 lakh rupees right they already have taken a 8 lakh rupee loan so how much more can be given 12 12 so this calculation we'll do later right this so in my current liabilities i should not calculate loan because this i'm going to adjust it later right now i'm just finding how much maximum loan the company can be given on basis of all of that then we will see that from that maximum limit how much they have already taken balance will be the loan given to them clear yes or no yes sir yeah so then what we will do first method let's do as per method 1 okay it's 0.75 Current assets fourteen lakh eighty thousand minus your how much will I take? How much will I take? Six lakhs. I will do the calculation with six lakhs only. The borrowing we'll see that after I come to know then I will subtract the borrowings. Then I will so in the calculation current liabilities you should exclude loans. So. Six lakh rupees. Then how much does it come up to? Eight lakh eighty thousand. Eight lakh eighty thousand. Ah, uh, fourteen lakh eighty thousand minus six lakhs is four lakh eighty, right? Yes or no? Say so eight lakh eighty. Hmm. So it will be eight lakh eighty, and then of that seventy five percent minus six lakh eight lakh eighty you get, and then into point seventy five. So how much do you get? Six lakh sixty thousand. Perfect. So you will get six lakhs sixty thousand. Six lakhs sixty thousand. now in as per the first method he is eligible to 660000 maximum out of that he is already 
exhausted it because he already has 8 lakh borrowing yes or no yes sir so will you give him more loan no sir will yes. uh, so as per tandon committee when you apply they will say you can't give him more he's already taken more instead okay so 6 lakh 60 as per the first method then we will tell that listen the maximum is 6 lakh 60 but the already he is taking 8 lakhs so only excess borrowing will not be allowed to him he has done excess borrowing yes or no so the excess borrowing can be converted into long term debt is what they are saying that you know for this is a working capital loan this is a maximum working capital limit that should be should have been done but he is exceeded the exceeded that by, uh, the short term loans that he can take so therefore it should be converted into long term clear till here so maximum permissible bank finance is for working capital short term basis if anything is excess it should be converted into long term loans okay or it should be the loan should be closed now as for the second method if you go so what is the second method again you will take 75% of current assets less your current liabilities you will get 5 lakh 10000 but they have already taken a loan of 8 lakh so this is excess borrowing it excess borrowing can be converted into long term debt because for short term the maximum amount is 6 lakh 60 that should have been given your 5 lakh 10 and your this much concept clear yes sir yeah so very simple let's see now the next we are doing is operating cycle now what does operating cycle mean it is your process for cash to cash tell me if today uh, i invest money in the business will i immediately get money no i must have bought raw materials yes or no this raw materials let's say i took one month for it to be delivered to me so i have invested i want to see how much is the blocked amount when do i get the actual amount back to me when i sell the goods but there is a time period where i will get the entire cycle yes or no the entire cycle after later i will get the money so one month waiting the raw materials have been good for purchase next i realize that after this the goods have been processed so processing time period is one month so again i have to wait then they have become finished goods and these finished goods are kept in the godown for another one month means you in the once the goods have been finished still they are not yet sold they are waiting to be sold they are put up in the store etc people are coming checking you know still they are buying so one month time period goes there then there is a sale so now when there is a sale will i get cash yes or no but what if it is a credit sale debtors so again i have to wait for one month and then in the end when the debtors pay me i will get cash so cash to cash concept is called as operating cycle clear till here because this much is time taken for my entire business operations to be completed do you want a big operating cycle or a small operating cycle hmm small small because i just invest quickly i'll get money then i can roll over again i can roll over i invest i get more money then i invest again small working capital is always preferred so here can how what is the total operating cycle 1 2 3 4 so 4 months it takes for my money to be uh, giving me more money cash to cash concept clear till here Yes. Yeah. So operating cycle uh, should be less. Now, operating cycle can be said that it is your raw material period plus your WIP period. How much time it takes to process? For how much time it takes for the goods to be sold? How much time it takes for the debtors to pay me the credit limit? So all this will be added. Yes or no? Hmm. 
to know the operating cycle yes or yes. no but creditors those who are giving me credit you go you can go and purchase that days will be subtracted yes or no because that is actually good for me because they are telling that without for example your i invested cash then it is 4 months but if imagine someone is giving me raw material but i have to pay the cash after 1 month so my operating cycle will already start yes or no 4 months time is taken from cash to cash but if my raw material supplier is saying fine you take the raw materials but pay me cash after 1 month so my cycle will start but my money is still not gone out yes or no yes means the credit period given to me is very good so that will help me reduce my uh, cycle okay because my cash is not gone but the cycle has already started so the operating cycle can be calculated by adding all of this and subtracting the credit period that is given to me creditors time period concept clear yes or no so what is the duration of operating cycle it is your raw material time period plus your wip plus your fixed period plus credit minus my credit period given to me so this will give me a duration of operating cycle now how do you calculate the raw material holding holding period now i already give you one month one month one month but to calculate that also there is a formula and it's very simple the average raw materials divided by the cost of raw materials into 12 i will come to know the raw materials holding period for wip average wip divided by cost of goods produced finished goods average finished goods divided by cost of goods sold into 12 data's collection period average data's divided by credit sales into 12 creditors collection period average creditors into 12 divided by credit purchase clear till here so this is the formula logic is also very simple how much time does it take those one month two months three months so there is a calculation given average upon what that cost relates to so average raw material will be connected with cost of raw materials creditors will be connected with the purchases credit purchase average debtors will be connected with the sales debtors are connected with sales wip will be connected with the cost of goods produced and finished goods are concerned with the cost of goods sold so wip is for production this is for selling clear so you can remember this now let's start with the sums very very simple sums these are let's see your december 2021 on the basis of the following information calculate the operating cycle of raksha goods limited <coughs> inventory that's your goods on april 1st 2019 it's this much and on 2020 it is this much accounts receivable is given to you okay is this much now what do we need average wherever we saw in the formula where we have to calculate the duration we require average so what we'll do this plus this divide by 2 Okay, to get average, right? If it is to four months, four lakhs last year, this year it is three lakh eighty. So what is the average? Both add and divide by two. So you will get your average uh, stock and average debtors by adding and dividing by two. Sales is given to you. So sales accounts receivable, that is your debtors, will be connected with sales. and cost of goods sold inventory will be calculated with your cost of goods sold are this much and this much clear so if i have to take the raw material the inventory period okay so what we did first we took the average and we divided by 2 we came to know this is average inventory then inventory period will be what the average 
डिवाइडेड बाय कॉस्ट ऑफ गुड्स सोल्ड दैट इज वन लैख फिफ्टी फाइव थाउजेंड यू विल कम टू नो इट दिस मेनी डेज सेम यू विल डू फॉर डेटर्स डेटर्स यू विल सी वॉट इज एवरेज डेटर्स देन डेटर्स आर विथ कनेक्टेड डिवाइड बाय सेल्स तो दिस इज अवर सेल्स इन टू थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव यू विल गेट दिस मेनी डेज ऑपरेटिंग साइकिल इज वेन यू हैव टू एड योर इन्वेंट्री पीरियड एंड योर और एनी अदर पीरियड सो देव यू इन्वेंट्री एंड योर डेटर्स कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियर टू योर यस वेरी सिंपल देन कम्स टू राइट इश्यू क्वेश्चन नाउ वॉट आर राइट इश्यू वेन द कंपनी वॉन्ट टू रेज एडिशनल फंड जब कंपनी को ज्यादा पैसे की जरूरत है दे वॉन्ट टू रेज मोर मनी सो इंस्टेड ऑफ गोइंग टू पब्लिक दे कैन गो टू द एग्जिस्टिंग शेयर होल्डर्स एंड टेल द एग्जिस्टिंग शेयर होल्डर्स दैट लिसन वी विल इश्यू सिक्योरिटीज वी विल एग्जिस्टिंग शेयर होल्डर्स वी विल ऑफर शेयर्स टू दैम एट डिस्काउंट बिकॉज दे लॉयल्टी डिस्काउंट विल बी गिवन टू दैम प्लस आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू एक्सपेंड ऑन मार्केटिंग एक्सेट्रा बिकॉज यू आर ऑलरेडी देर सो राइट इश्यू आई गिवन दैम एट अ lower price some will subscribe some will not subscribe so whoever surprise will get subscribe will get the right to the right issue clear till here concept is clear we do it in company law now tell me one thing when the person is investing the in existing shareholder is investing will he get at a discount or he will get at more than the market price or at market price Existing shareholders will issue the shares at discount or no? Discount. Yes. So now we are going to calculate what is the value of that right. What is the benefit to the investor? Concept clear? What are we going to find out? What is the benefit to the existing shareholder? So first, the concept is uh, the calculation is also very simple. One can calculate. So I'll explain it when I'm doing the sums. Right now I'll just explain. the number of right shares is the market price minus the price divided by the total number of shares that you will be holding okay note floating cost is to be ignored while calculating the value of rights so i'll explain in the sum it's very simple don't require some additional uh, understanding for it pay attention in june 2022 they asked this question Solar Limited decides to issue six right shares for every eleven shares held. So six shares will be issued. So these are your right shares. Yes or no? For every eleven held, right? This is what is written, right? So these are the old and these are the new. So for every 11 shares held you are going to get 6 right shares right shares are priced at 561 okay and the come right price okay is traded at 785 in the market so what is the market price i'm going to go full logical there is no formula 785 785 is the market price yes or no now it is offered to the investor at what price 561 so right issue price is 560 how much benefit did he get how much benefit did he get 785 224 so he got 224 he got a benefit of 224 now this he got it at a certain ratio yes or no that means for every he for every 11 held he got 6 so he got one share or six shares six shares so he got Total six shares. So, what is the benefit that he has got? Two forty four, two twenty four into six. Yes or no? 
Yes, sir. Because he is getting six right shares, and the benefit is two twenty four. So for six shares, he is going to get how much benefit? One thousand three hundred and forty four. One thousand three hundred and forty four. Now, this entire thing he has got on one share on on total number of shares. Or how much he had to hold? Seventy. No, it was how much total shares that he had to hold to get this benefit. Eleven. Eleven. So he had to hold eleven shares to get this benefit. So what? How much does it come up to? One twenty-two point one. Correct. So the value of the right share is one twenty-two point one eight. Now pay attention to what I'm saying. This is one way of calculating. Okay, in executive also we used to calculate by this method, where you should say that you know he got this much benefit, and uh, for this many shares he got these many rights. Now there is another. method okay also to look at it one is post holding for example it is at the time value in professional we are not going to use 11 as a denominator okay it's a different valuation can be done a different methods right you might get different answers also so that's also fine what is the logic what they are saying here okay fine we understood the executive you should take it 11 now what we are saying that listen he has Total how many shares after the right issue? Six he is going to get old plus eleven he will he already had eleven plus more he will get six total holding how much he is going to get? Seventeen. Seventeen understood. So on we are calculating on total number of shares he has this much benefit. So per share how much benefit he is getting? Divide by seventeen how much do you get? Now how much do you get? Seventy nine. Seventy nine. So this will be treated as value of right share. Concept clear? So only thing in executive you should take your eleven, but here we are saying take the total number of shares. So we will come to know in on total holdings after the right issue what will be the value. Okay, so how did they bring it up? Very simple. Logic is also very simple. That this person got seven eighty five minus five sixty one is the benefit. Okay, this benefit he got, and not only this, the benefit is how much? Seven eighty five minus five sixty one, and like this he got six shares. Yes or no? And divided by the total number of shares that he has will give you the value of right share. Concept clear? So you can write down the formula, etc. If you want, okay, just for presentation purpose. That right share divided by total shares. Understood? So the total number of right share divided by this. So we are doing six upon seventeen into market value minus the right issue. Seven eighty five minus. 561 so this is how you will present concept clear yes sir now let's see the next one you try this is also an exam question of december 2020 and i want you to answer it within 20 seconds so first we will read abc limited is considering a right issue by issuing one share against two so new is one share And old is two shares. For every two shares held, they are giving one right issue. Yes or no? Uh, to fi finance a uh, pro project requiring four point five CR flotation cost. Flotation cost <laughs> always will be what? What did I give? It is to be ignored. Ignored. Company currently has eighteen lakh shares outstanding, and the current price is rupees hundred. What is the current price? Just remember the formula. We just require as per the formula. That's it. Current price is hundred. The subscription price is fifty. 
सो कैन यू टेल मी एज पर द फॉर्म्यूला वॉट इज द बेनिफिट द पर्सन इज गेटिंग इट इज ऑफ हंड्रेड रुपीज ही इज गेटिंग फॉर फिफ्टी सो कैन आई से हंड्रेड माइनस फिफ्टी इज द गेन टू द इन्वेस्टर he is getting this he is getting one share okay so one will come here into one if they were giving two then two shares he would have matlab the benefit would be doubled you is getting only one and divided by the total holdings like three, the, three. how much do you get it 16.66 okay 16. so value same thing you can write present it nicely And you get value of right is sixteen point six 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 is six point seven. Clear till here. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Then we'll be doing the next one that is the day count convention for debt security. What we're doing? Day count convention for debt securities. Very simple. Debt securities get interest. on their securities yes or no debt security debentures bonds on that interest is payable yes or no yes sir no. yeah so now the interest is payable if for example there is a leap year instead of 365 there will be how many days 366 366 so how many days extra one day one day extra second scenario if the mm, uh, due date okay on the due date on which interest is to be given is a holiday is a holiday so that day banks will be closed the company will be closed or it's a sunday so next day we will give right so how much day in delay is there one day one day Now tell me, is this a very big one day? One day is it a very big calculation or something? No, sir. No, but by law we have to clarify what will happen. Should we take three sixty six or we should take three sixty five? For Sunday that one day delay is there. What will happen on that? We have to in law has to be explained or no, so that all the companies follow a uniform policy. So it's a day count, a day count that we are going to do, but that day count. Is important because law has to specify उसका करना क्या है क्या करना चाहिए उसका clear? So SEBI yeah. has issued a clarification, two clarification they have done for what is leap year and holiday. So day count for debt securities for uh, you know your regulation two thousand and eight SEBI has provided two clarification for that day count. Very simple, okay. First one though on reading only you will come to know. For example, if the due dates are set, I want to ask you, okay, logically, due dates are set because on one due date the it was since it was a Sunday, it was paid the next day. Should the new schedule be followed now? Every time we should take from there half yearly, three months, or we should not disturb the schedule pattern. That should always consider consider. Consider this one Sunday as a off day, as a you know just a one off case. Yes or no? Should you disturb the payment pattern? Yes. No. So first, very good is the subsequent coupon schedule should not be disturbed merely because the payment date in respect of one particular coupon interest date has been postponed. Clear? Because. it has fallen on a holiday till here it is clear should you disturb the payment schedule no common sense why okay doesn't make sense you should not second do you, do you have to pay for that one extra day no sir obviously see. not see what is happening is the interest for payment falls on the holiday then the payment will be made on the following working day that is the next working day okay so you will not pay on sunday we'll pay on monday so for that sunday do you have to give interest answer is no however the dates of future coupons would be as per the schedule only only this because it fell on sunday will be given on monday rest all the schedules will be set yes or no 
Yes or no? Yes, sir. Uh, but don't you think that one day loss is happening to the customer, to the investor? Will there be a loss or there will won't be a loss? Will there be a loss or there won't be a loss of one day, for example? There will be a loss. Sir. Answer is there will not be a loss. Let me explain. Because if this is the payment schedule which has been planned, let's say it is quarterly. So four quarters have been set. Till here it is clear. Quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. So all days of the year will be covered. Yes or no? Yes or no? All days of the year will be covered. All the months of the year will be covered. If it is a quarterly payment. Now what is happening is on this day when I had to make the payment, I couldn't make because it was Sunday. I paid on this day. So one day uh, delay is there. But I'm going to pay for this entire period on this day, right? On this in this schedule, I should have paid on the last day. I couldn't pay, so I paid it here. Now, for this payment schedule is not going to be hurt, right? So I will take this entire day. This Sunday will start like Monday onwards. So you will get the payment only, na? In the next next schedule because the next schedule is not disturbed from start till end only is going to be counted. Understood? means the first schedule will come the first quarter will start here end year payment should be made here it couldn't be made made here but this entire period is still counted and this will only be continued so that period will be covered in the next month also clear till here yes that opportunity cost and all that you don't have to think law says you don't have to worry you are getting in every quarter that's fine one day is a one off case don't disturb the schedule so here they have given an example so let's see you this i've read now i'm reading the example okay what is the example the date of issue of the bond is first july 2016 maturity is on 2018 date of coupon dates has already been given january and this so we are concerned with this this was the coupon dates due dates half year uh, se half semi annually means half yearly so two times i will have to make the payment this and this now in case the first the first schedule as first jan came a sunday so when the payment will be made please tell me which day we will make the payment monday i mean which date january 2nd january so coupon will be payable on january 2nd now do i have to calculate Jan should i disturb the schedule or the the next schedule will be as it is as it is as it is very simple however the calculation for the other would not be disturbed and payment will be made as if for whatever calculation was done as if 1st January was not a holiday understood clear so they are saying that do the calculation as if it was not a Sunday and you just pay it don't worry about you know opportunity cost etc also the next date would be would remain July only clear till here so if it is not on first give it on second and it's absolutely fine you will not have to disturb the payment schedule now coming for leap year now pay attention to this in the day count convention normally normally corporates let's say if i have to pay for three months three months interest don't you think if i go on actual basis the answer will be different and if i take a uh 30 days 360 method will be answer will be different yes sir. means if it i assume that one month is of 30 days and entire year is of 360 days okay all months are of 30 days and because of that the entire uh, year is of 360 days till here it is clear Yes, sir. Because one one day February, then one day up down, then you know next month again 
थर्टी वन डेज देन अगेन कैलकुलेशन देन थर्टी और वन वुड प्रिफर टू हैव अ कॉन्स्टेंट इंटरेस्ट रेट गिवेन थ्रू आउट द ईयर वॉट डू यू प्रिफर वुड यू प्रिफर द एक्चुअल मेथड वेर हैव टू सेट एंड कैलकुलेट एवरी डे थर्टी डेज देन नेक्स्ट मंथ इज थर्टी वन डेज एंड नेक्स्ट मंथ इज ट्वेंटी एट डेज सो हैव टू डू एक्चुअल और आई वुड प्रिफर दिस मेथड फर्स्ट वन सो मोस्टली कंपनीज फॉलो द फर्स्ट वन कॉर्पोरेट दे प्रिफर थर्टी सिक्स थ्री सिक्सटी एंड फिनिश एवरी मंथ सो इन्वेस्टर ऑल्सो नो दैट एवरी मंथ टू थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड इज क्रेडिटिंग इन बो माई अकाउंट इट शुड इन हैपन टू थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड नेक्स्ट मंथ थ्री थाउजेंड देन आफ्टर दैट टू थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड इंटरेस्ट शुड बी क्रेडिटेड बिकॉज द कैलकुलेशन विल वेरी मच वेरी ड्यू टू द एक्चुअल मेथड हाउ एवर सेबी हैज क्लैरिफाइड सेबी हैज क्लैरिफाइड दैट वी हैव टू यूज एक्चुअल मेथड क्लियर टेलियो Which method we use? Actual method. Till here it is clear. Means we actually calculate the days and actually calculate the years also. So if now another in in actual also there is another difference. Actual versus three sixty means the the month they keep as same but year they take as three sixty. And the other one is actual actual. That is year and days both have taken on actual basis. In India, we are following. Sebi has told to follow actual, actual basis. Clear to you? That means, if it is a leap year, I will take how much in the denominator year? Three sixty-six, and the calculation will be done on three sixty-six. Understood? And in the days, whatever months are there, that will also come exact. Concept clear? Yes or no? Yes. If it is a not a leap year, then denominator will be how much? Three sixty-five. Understood? So for leap year, they have said use the denominator three sixty-six. For regular non-leap year, they have said use it three sixty-five days. Concept perfectly clear. Yes or no? Very actual actual basis finish. What they have said? Actual actual. So in order to ensure because everyone should follow that way, then only it will make sense. So that's what they are saying that in order to con ensure consistency, ABS clarify this is the method. A uniform methodology shall be followed for calculation of interest payment in case of leap year, which shall be as as follows. In case of a leap year, if February falls during the tenure of the security, okay, February twenty uh, ninth, it is following during the tenure of the security. Then the number of days shall be reckoned as how many days? If it is a leap year, how much they are saying? Three sixty six. Number of yeah, the year will be three sixty six. The year will the number of days will be three sixty six. then irrespective of whether the interest is paid annually half yearly quarterly or monthly whatever you are doing but number of days of year how much you will take 366 understood again if i am saying it is 1 lakh rupees is the principal amount Into ten percent interest, into okay. If I want to calculate for uh, three for whatever months, okay, I want to calculate. So your denominator will be three sixty six, and there it will be actually how much ever time it is there. Whether I want to calculate for one like two months, or it is quarterly, then three months. If it is semi annually, six months. And I will put the days here. Clear till you? Exact days I'll sit and calculate. Understood? Yes, sir. Very simple. There are no sums, sums in it. It's just like a actual, actual basis. Do it. So it is thus emphasized that for a half yearly interest payment would be reckoned. Ah, uh, interest payment three sixty six would be reckoned twice if it is half yearly. So. 
for the first half also we will use 366 and do the calculation and for the second half also we will use 366 as the denominator understood yes sir like if i say this is for okay this is for entire year if if i say for 6 months so this will be the calculation for 3 months this will be the calculation so whatever calculation you are doing denominator will be whatever method so twice i have to do calculation if it is half yearly year also i'll do a calculation and year also i'll do a calculation whatever interest is coming will be half year also it will be there but they are saying the number of year the days will always be 366 if it is quarterly quarterly how many times calculation interest calculation i have to do quarter is how much time hmm interest calculated will have to be calculated four times for monthly i'll have to calculate 12 times clear till you so interest calculation will have to be done if it is half yearly twice uh if it is quarterly four times if it is monthly 12 times so here they have given you very simple okay uh example date of issue of corporate bonds is given then uh, semi annually it is half yearly that's so they have given you the due date june uh, july 11 uh, first july is the first due date and since it's half yearly and other due date is on first jan so twice i will do calculation but twice i will take denominator the years as how much 366 would be denominated uh, would be reckoned as the denominator on actual actual basis for payment of interest both of the half year period for first jan and july 2016 concept clear yes sir so for this half year also Year should be taken because it's a leap year, na. You will take three sixty six. It's that simple. Okay, there's no complication in it. Now, coming to sums on ICDR. Okay. Now, SEBI issue of capital and disclosure requirements two thousand eighteen. Now, very simple. This is a June twenty twenty two question. Completely logic based. X Limited wants to issue thousand shares. Through a book build offer, price band is given from one thirty to one fifty. How many shares do they want to issue? How many share issue करने इनको? How many shares do they want to issue? One thousand. One thousand shares. And price band they are saying that between one thirty to one fifty people can bid. So we are going to see the bids. In bids, when I see one fifty. 200 people have come in total demand is of 200 now for 140 people are saying for 140 there are more number of people coming in 300 for 138 500 people have bid it and for 130 1000 people have bid it clear to you i understood the facts i want to sell 1000 shares i have given that price it 130 to 150 bid so i have got the bids now they are saying bids are received as follows what is the cut off price in this offer they are asking what is the cut off price at what price will it be finally decided so what i will see see at this price 200 people are demanded yes or no at this price at 140 the one who is giving who was ready to pay 150 he will be happy if it is given for 140 also na no? to him you were ready to pay 150 i am saying 150 i could not sell entire 1000 shares only 200 people are there so i'll have to go for 140 category in 140 i see 300 more people have come so total they will so be very happy to buy because they were ready to give 150 but i can't price it at 150 if i give a 140 i will get total 500 bits 500 shares I'll be able to sell, but I want to sell thousand. So either I go to the next price, in 138. In 138, what is happening? These two people too will be ready only because they were ready to give 150. I'm giving it 138, so he will so be ready only. 
even 140 guy will be have ready so this guy will also be coming this guy will also come this guy will also come so at this point i will be total demand if i add up all of this is 1000 can i say at 1000 when this total demand is 1000 i will be able to sell all my securities yes sir so therefore the price that will the cutoff price will be how much cut off price 138 138 why 138 because thousand share demand is satisfied very good thousand shares demand is satisfied i will be able to sell the thousand shares easily if i would have gone for 140 then i would be able to sell only 500 shares because only these two would be ready so at this price i get a good price i will do sell off clear so this will be the cut off price that is there this is the sums rest is theory Hi, now we'll be starting with a very important type of sum which is re related to your SEBI ICDR regulations 2018. Now this has been regularly asked in your CS executive and is also in your CS professional level. Now in ICDR regulations 2018, one specific regulation number I will be talking about is your regulation number 57 which talks about green shoe options so the regulation number is regulation number 57 of the icdr regulations 2018 which talks about green shoe options now what is green shoe option and why is it called as a green shoe basically this was this strategy was founded by green shoe manufacturing company and in the name behind of the company they have called this as green shoe option so the term comes from a company called as green shoe option company founded in 19, 1919 which was the first company to use this practice that is green shoe option in usa now what is exactly green shoe option facility so we understood it's nothing to do with a green shoe which is because of a, it was a green shoe manufacturing company who had first used this strategy. So what is this strategy? It is actually a price post listing price stabilizing mechanism. So what is a green shoe option? In short, it is a post listing post listing price stabilizing mechanism. mechanism now after listing many things can happen either the prices can shoot up or it can crash now we don't want that abnormal fluctuations in price for that we use this green shoe option so your paytm if you remember it the price had directly crashed to around 10 percent and it got 27 percent actually so imagine Paytm when they were listed they had crashed around 27% and Paytm had actually uh, taken approval from their shareholders for doing the green shoe option as well. So let's see. Just seeing the green shoe option that Paytm was also planning to take. So it was the green shoe so they even paytm when they had come out with an ipo they had taken an approval to incorporate the green shoe option for stabilizing the price post listing so let's see further the first company in india to incorp to use this strategy was your ic ici bank which was then followed by TCS and many companies nowadays prefer to incorporate this post listing price stabilizing mechanism. Now what is this strategy etc. Let's understand. So uh, let me give you an example and explain to you. Let's say a public issue is made. A public issue is decided. Of making an issue of 1 lakh shares 
So to this public, how many shares will be floated? This mm -hmm. is uh, one lakh. So this is the issue size. Now, before doing the public issue, as per the ICDR regulations 2018, before the public issue is done or the issue is opened, there are certain pre-issue holders. There are certain pre-issue holders. Can you tell me who are these pre-issue holders? Where we will say issue करने के पहले ही आपको buy कर रहा है. Who we will tell such things to? The promoters. So the promoters have to invest in their own company prior to the public has invested. So we will tell these pre-issue holders. I need to remember that the promoters have to contribute minimum. 20% of the issue size whatever is the issue size 20% has to already be uh, invested or been subscribed by the promoters is this clear now the promoters okay and the shareholders they believe that post listing there can be multiple scenarios where there is an over subscription and the share price shoots up or there is a failure like paytm failure where the share price crashes in both these cases can you tell me if the share price on listing shoots up or shoots down don't you think it will affect the shareholders and nobody wants this kind of fluctuation agree would you as a shareholder or a promoter want such kind of extreme fluctuations in your company yes or no no so what what is the objective we want that the price shouldn't go so high so low we want it to be stabilized somewhere we wanted to stabilize the price so we want to stabilize the price now how will we do it let's understand the promoters or the pre share uh, pre issue shareholders we there will be first of all someone appointed as we saw i showed you in ptm also who did they appoint to stabilize this price this we are checking of ptm okay they all had taken approval from the stock exchange to incorporate appoint a stabilizing agent so here what will happen a stabilizing agent will be appointed so a stabilizing agent this stabilizing agent are generally your merchant bankers are your merchant bankers sometimes merchant bankers offer a varied range of services such as merchant banking services your underwriting services so whatever we are going to call this person who is going to help us stabilize this price called as the stabilizing agent am i clear to you yeah so what this stabilizing agent will do he will go to the promoters and the pre share uh, pre issue shareholders and he will borrow their shares he will say aap to invest karna hi hai na aapko aapne before the issue you have subscribed so he will borrow the shares okay or these promoters will give their shares up to maximum 15% of issue size up what is the maximum lending that can be given or borrowing by the issuing a uh, stabilizing agent so it is max 15% can be borrowed from uh these pre issue holders or i'm calling them as promoters so the stabilizing agent is telling the promoters you give your shares to me i said fine then the uh, the up to 15% so we can say 15000 now what this stabilizing agent will do he will float the shares in additionally in the market am i clear till here normally how many approval was taken to float how many shares initially 1 1 lakh the stabilizing agent has come in and he has borrowed 15000 shares which the promoters were holding 
okay and he will float this also for the public he will float this also to the public so in the market how much shares will be floated 1 1,15,000. Can I say there is a over allotment done? There is a over allotment done. You understand stage by stage process I will tell you. But first you understood what will happen. How PTM applied that we want to have this green shoe option. They must have appointed a stabilizing agent. This stabilization will go to the pre-issue holders and borrow 15 maximum 15 percent of their shares and then put it into the market he will give it in the market he will sell it in the market so there is an over allotment of 15,000 uh, 15, so in the market 1 lakh 15,000 shares are being floated am I clear till your yes once this is going in now see when there is a tell me like this kind of a scenario where we have a Zomato. Have you heard of Zomato? This is a case of Zomato IPO if you've seen. The IPO was a super hit. IPO was a super hit and there was hitting upper circuits. Because there was an oversubscription. Oversubscription people want IPO allotment. Nahi lag hai, chahiye, IPO, IPO chahiye. So because of this excess shares that have been floated can i say the prices will stabilize pehle sirf ek lakh tha first there was only 1 lakh and there were so many people demanding now there is 1 lakh 15000 so can i say somewhere the price will stabilize come down yes or no yes yes so over allotment helped me from a random shooting up of price random shooting up of price due to over allotment understood till you so like uh, demand and supply right yeah so demand and supply since basically the demand was so much and the supply was only a 1 lakh now the supply is a 1 lakh 15 thousand so somewhere the price is stabilized this is the first scenario and normally people understand this only but there is a very important second aspect also which is about down downfall what happens when it is something like a paytm ipo paytm ipo was a horrible ipo where investors lost their money so for that also we'll see how this stabilizing agent is going to work and going to stabilize the price in case of a failure ipo or in case of a downfall ipo first you understood over allotment has helped me stabilize Over allotment has helped me stabilize. Now, next, what is going to happen? The third thing. The third is when the stabilizing agent, stabilizing agent is going to sell, you know, those 15,000 also, he is going to sell those uh, over allotted shares, over allotted shares okay those excess shares into the market yes he sells the sells the excess shares which are up to 15 percent of issue size in the market then what will happen can i say this stabilizing agent will be gathering money because he's selling the shares he will be collecting the funds all of these funds, all of these funds, okay, whatever he is going to collect, he is going to put in a separate bank account called as a escrow account or a green shoe option account. Option account. In this money, since he is selling the shares, there will be a lot of funds inside the shares come in this account, yes or no? Since 15,000 worth shares have been floated in the market. So 15,000 worth shares money will come in and it will be put into this account. Yes or no? So in this account there will be a lot of money since all of the shares of worth 15,000 shares have been sold in the market. Next what will happen? Let's say the prices have started to reverse. 
it was going up and then trend niche aa gaya and the price started to crash it went up but then it started to crash so we are seeing this kind of a scenario that this went up and now it's coming to crash let's say this was the issue price issue price was rupees 100 issue price was how much rupees 100 and now it's starting to crash below this amount it started to go to 90 and below that now what will the stabilizing agent do you remember he has this green you remember he has this green shoe option account green shoe option account in which he has a lot of funds inside with help of this funds with the help of this funds he will start buying the shares he will start purchasing the shares so at discounted price yes or no so with this he will start purchasing shares now when he starts purchasing he is going to create a demand for the shares जैसे गिर रहा है पंद्रह परसेंट ऑफ द कंपनी का फंड ही है वेर यू कैन गो एड एंड कीप बाइंग सो द डिमांड विल फर्दर इंक्रीज सो द शेयर प्राइस वोट क्रैश बिलो अ पॉइंट टू सम एक्सटेंट इट विल स्टेबिलाईज अगेन बिकॉज देर इज अ डिमांड क्रिएटेड बाय दी स्टेबिलाईजिंग एजेंट बिकॉज वॉट एवर फंड ही विल स्टार्ट बाइंग एट नाइंटी एटी एक्सेट्रा ही विल कीप परचेजिंग द शेयर सो दैट वेन देर इज अ डिमांड फॉर बाइंग or there is a demand for the shares the prices will not fall further yes agree till here okay. yes so iske niche nahi jayega because yahan se trigger ho gaya issue price ke niche gaya he will start buying so there is not going to be any panic selling because since there is a good amount of purchases also investors will not panic otherwise what happens if it goes below a price there is going to be happen panic sale and crashes that crash won't happen because of we can say artificial demand has been created artificial demand created by the stabilizing agent yes or no by stabilizing agent so it doesn't fall also because in case if it starts going down with this money he will start buying and since more has been floated it will not even go very high it will go at a average amount average pricing have you understood now there are three things so it has been stabilized somewhere from shooting up or falling down because when it's falling down this guy will buy from the funds that was there when he sold a 50 15000 shares so further what will happen once this is stabilized because this stabilizing action etc can only go on for 30 days you cannot uh regulate the prices forever post listing 30 days market can be regulated in this fashion that whenever it falls the mer the merchant banker or the stabilizing agent is buying it creating a demand for it now next what happens now next the stabilizing agent moment is 30 days are over in the next two days okay in the next few days he has to return all the 15000 shares to the promoters from whoever he has borrowed now if i have borrowed the shares from you after the borrowing i have to give the shares back to you yes or no 15000 shares tumhare paas se liye maine abhi main usko stabilize kar raha tha tumhare paise ke sath main artificial demand create karke bhai jab bhi gir raha tha wohi paise se main buy kar raha tha aur zyada bhi float kar raha tha upar bhi nahi ja raha tha to buy kar raha tha ab 30 days ke baad mein i have to return the 15000 shares back to you so let's see after okay later what happens later three scenarios can happen what kind of scenarios can happen three kind of scenarios can happen case 1 case 2 and case 3 sort it till here so three scenarios can happen case 1 case 2 and case 3 now case 1 let's say it was a case like paytm kya ho gaya it is a case like paytm wala case dekh rahe hain hum log jisme ipo losses ho rahe the 
it was falling okay ipo uh, was a kind of a failure so the next case we are seeing where it was a let's say uh, it went a hit so ipo went like a zomato zomato ipo where the prices never came down only from the issue price ke niche kabhi trigger hi nahi hua it was just shooting up so ipo was a huge success ipo was a huge success okay and let's see a third case of a ipo where it had fluctuations where it went up it went down both so it was somewhere in between so uh, maybe lic ka jo ipo tha it didn't go up or maybe i don't know whether you know this paris defense this was another kind of uh, ipo that was launched people were crazy behind it it went up then it crashed both case okay let's see now what happens in each of the case you have the clear we are taking three scenarios and trying to understand what the stabilizing agent will do stabilizing agent what he will do stabilizing agent in the green shoe option so first ipo is a failure where failure means it was trading below the issue price so what happened this was the issue price issue price now issue price was rupees 100 moment it uh, it listed moment it got listed it started crashing downwards so can i say the stabilizing agent what will he do to stabilize the price and it doesn't crash further with the help of the promoters with the help of the promoters and the pre issue holders money he will buy back all the 15000 shares he will buy back all 15000 shares that he has done because everybody was selling so he was buying he was creating demand and he was creating demand so the prices didn't fall more it because of the demand it somewhere stabilized and he has acquired the 15000 shares back moment it is ended this 15000 shares can be given to the promoters ye lijiye aapke shares hum log ne at least massive fall se bacha liya understood till here yeah so this was the first case second now it was a huge success where the no but there were no sellers in the market it's a very rare case let's say it was a zomato ipo or hota hai buy purchase order daloge na no sellers in the market you from who will you buy no sellers upper circuit upper circuit upper circuit so ye banda buy buy back kar kar payega kya will the stabilizing agent be able to buy back the shares okay. no buy back no sellers in the market so what happens we are taking this scenario we are taking a scenario like this now the issue price again was uh, 100 it directly opened like a nike ipo or a zomato ipo it went it shot up and it never never till date came down no sellers in the market because in the 30 days maybe there were no sellers there just hypothetical situation so the stabilizing agent will say wo jo 15000 shares to bech di hum log ne paisa aa gaya but buy back nahi kar pa rahe hum log we could not so in this case will the stabilizing agent be able to buy back any shares so they could buy back no shares could not buy back any shares in the market now question is ki bhai after 15 days after 30 days we have to return the promoter the shares yes or no we had just borrowed this to stabilize we had borrowed the shares to stabilize the price and after the stabilization period is over we have to return it back to the promoters so then we are saying now what to do no sellers in the market so then what happens pay attention okay pay attention to this of this scenario <clears throat> the stabilizing agent will realize that he could not buy back anything because the prices never came down in the market at all okay 
so then he will go the to the issuer issuer company he will go he will go to nika he will go to zomato what a superb ipo ek koi seller in everybody is buying upper circuit upper circuit beautiful 1 lakh 15000 sold and it was massively people who just wanted to buy he will go to this and he will say now see he will go this stabilizing agent will go and tell the issuer that massive ipo i loved it everybody loved it but i had borrowed 15000 shares and this 15000 shares are to give it back to the promoters and i can't purchase anything from the market so what will happen he will go and tell the issuer to a lot extra 15000 shares a uh, 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 issuer can allot 15000 shares additionally yes or no company hai kuch ke shares hai extra 15000 nikal ke de do so 15000 shares will be given to the promoters or the pre issue holders here let's say it will be given to the stabilizing agent and this stabilizing agent will then return it to the pre issue holders in this case promoters and now it will happen normally company had taken how many permission of how many shares to be listed permission of how many shares were taken to be listed initially 1 lakh 1 lakh now a uh, application will be have to have to made application to stock exchange to list additional how many shares Additional fifteen thousand shares. We have taken from the promoters. We have to return to the promoters. We couldn't get it from the market. So please give the shares to the promoters. Tell me, will the promoters pay even one rupee? No. Promoters के behalf पे पैसा तो green shoe option account में पड़ा था. वही account से issue price पे it will be given to them. so the company will allot the shares to the pre issue holders at issue price and this money will be debited from the green shoe option account is this clear yeah, yeah. so what happens is 15000 shares we have to return so we will tell the company you allot it money there is kept in the green shoe account we will debit it from there now in the case one also one interesting thing i wanted to tell you okay in this thing what happens this was a loss since it's falling and he is going to buy back 15000 shares since it is falling now pay attention to this okay i'm going to take you to this particular thing now since the share price is falling the stabilizing agent will be purchasing it below the issue price yes or no yes. yeah so after purchasing 15000 shares since he is buying below the issue price can i see there will be lot of excess amount in the Account, excess amount, because on an average hundred पे थोड़ी buy करेगा वो अभी. He will buy it average ninety five. Because it is falling, let's say fifteen thousand shares उसने सब ninety five में खरीद लिया. तो five rupees का तो फायदा हो गया ना? So issue price के नीचे it fell, let's say ninety five पे गिर गया. At ninety five he went and he bought fifteen thousand shares. So five rupees benefit is there. It is kept in the account only, and fifteen thousand shares be again five rupees ka uh, excess money be. So this excess amount, okay, which is there, will go into the I E P F account, Investor Education Protection Fund, because promoters got fifteen thousand shares as it is. Ah, uh, we since it was falling from their money, we purchased it. now this excess amount will be deposited into investor education protection fund here since nobody was selling company had to allot extra additionally 15000 shares and they had to make an application for listing of this 15000 shares as well now coming to this other case of paras defense upar ja ke niche aa gaya not bahut niche nahi aaya he just came till this amount the prom, the in this case the stabilizing agent could not buy 15000 shares he could buy only 10000 shares 
So this stabilizing agent could buy only how many? 10,000 shares. So can you tell me what will happen here? So it's a combo of case one, case two. So at low price, at low price, let's say at 95 he is buying. At 95 he is buying and uh, when it was up, he could not buy because there were no sellers in the market. So he could purchase only 10,000 shares and that too he bought it at a cheaper rate. So the excess amount always is given where the excess profit that has been made, where will it go? It will go into IEPF account, Investor Education Protection Fund. And for the balance 15, 5,000 shares which he could not buy, 5,000 shares which he could not buy, what will he do? He will have to, uh, come, will have to apply for listing and taking permission for additional allotment. Okay, it will be allotted and from the green shoe option account at issue price, this will all be bought back. Clear till you. So these are all the three cases. I'll just take you all through. This will be given in your study material as well. Okay, first just let me take you through this. Purpose. Now tell me, is the purpose of green shoe option trying to make a quick buck or trying to make profit or try to provide excess capital? Is that the objective? The purpose is not to make excess share capital available. The objective is not over allotment. Is the objective over allotment? Yeah. Ek lakh ka permission lo, ek lakh pandra hazar bech do. Wo objective nahi hai. But the objective is to act as a price stabilizing mechanism. Promoters and pre-issue holders. So those who before the issue they have to buy certain stake. Their shares can be borrowed up to an amount of 15% of the total issue. Is this clear? Promoter shares can be borrowed, which will later after the you know stabilization period is over, it will be returned. Can be borrowed up to 15% of the total issue. Now only those promoters can lend who have more than 5% stake. For example, there are I have, I am a promoter, I alone have bought 20%. So I am allowed to lend. Let's say there are five promoters. The companies can have more than one promoter. They can have multiple promoters. So only promoters who are having more than 5% can collectively lend up to 15%. For example, 10, 10, 10%. So let's say there are three promoters. So promoter A, B, C. 10%, 10% and he has 4%. Can C lend in green shoe options? No, no, so C cannot lend. We are saying the only those who have more than 5% can lend. So A and B can lend? Yes. Can they lend the full 20%? No, they can lend maximum how much? Maximum 15%, which will be later returned to them. Okay, so this excess supply in the market, 1 lakh shares will be floated or 1 lakh 15,000 shares will be floated. So this excess supply of shares will ensure that the price does not shoot up to abnormally high levels. Okay, because what happens if the price shoots up to abnormal, because over subscription, everybody is demanding, it just goes up too high then that is also not a very good scenario because it will then crash so we want it to be stabilized rather than have this massive fluctuation now they've given an example which which i have explained entirely with all the three given situations so they have said consider a company if they're giving an ipo of one lakh the price has been decided as issue price is 100 rupees in the green shoe option you can over a lot up to 15% that is 15,000. So your issue size ka 15% can be over allotted that is 15,000 can be allotted. So in the market total shares that will be issued will be 1 lakh 15,000 shares. Is this clear? Now when this 15,000 shares are uh, issued in additionally, it is going to be sold in the market. So this excess supply will ensure that there is no shortage of supply. Yes or no? 
दिस फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड शेयर्स का फंड विल बी पुट इन अपरेट अकाउंट कॉल्ड इन दिस प्रोसीज ऑफ दिस फिफ्टीन परसेंट विल बी पुट इन टू अ ग्रीन शू ऑप्शन अकाउंट क्लियर टू लियर इट विल हैव दिस ग्रीन शू ऑप्शन शेयर्स now the prices will try to be stabilized whenever it falls the promoter the stabilizing agent will buy from that amount will create a demand so it doesn't crash during the stabilization period if the prices drop below 100 rupees the stabilizing agent will get active, uh, activated will start utilizing the funds in the green shoe option account and buy these shares from the open market situation 1 very buybacks all the shares 15000 Where it was crashing, he could buy. Second, he could buy back none of them because it must be a massive, beautiful IPO that if never fell below the issue price at all, stabilize करने की जरूरत ही नहीं पड़ी. And third, uh, where he could buy back some of them, only ten thousand and five thousand he couldn't buy back. So tell me the entire crux in this. In the situation one. Since it is falling, he is going to buy back below the issue price. Will there be a profit? Yes or no? Will there be excess funds left after he has bought fifteen thousand? The excess will go to IEPF account. Here, when he couldn't buy back any of them, it was a beautiful IPO. Never came down only. So in that case, there will have to be a permission. or there has to be a allotment separately by the company allotment and listing application have to be made for how many shares 15000 15000 and third where it could be some where they are giving an example say 10000 so 5000 to nahi kar paye hum log to jo bhi 10000 pe buy kiya we must have bought it at a profit so whatever excess is there will go in ipf and whatever is a uh, you know could not be a lot could not be bought back could not be bought back so those there will be listed listed that would get listed allotted and then listed onto the stock exchange so the company will then have 1 lakh 15000 shares in this case one so 1 lakh hi market mein ghumega over the end towards the end only 1 lakh will uh, be floated in the market yes or no in situation 1 since he is bought back 15000 only so was there a need to issue additional shares no so market mein 1 lakh hi shares honge in situation 2 what happened is we couldn't buy back so now we'll have to allot more and we have to take an application and make a increase in share capital and now the share capital will be 1 lakh 15000 shares understood till here and there would be 1 lakh 15000 shares traded on the stock exchange in the third case situation number 3 there will be 1 lakh 5000 shares because 10000 to bought back ho chuke hain jo buy back nahi kar sake use additionally allot karke list karna padega so here you will have 1 lakh 5000 am i clear with all the three situations yes yeah now what is the procedure also given under uh, this regulation number in your material or maybe the module you can make a correction this is regulation number 57 they have given what regulation number 45 they have given 45 but they have given of the previous regulation and they have uh, quoted wrongly that it is of 2018 actually it is regulation number 57 of 2018 okay so these are all the three options now that you have understood just a small little uh, procedural part that you pass a resolution so in that regulation number 57 it said that the company has to pass a ordinary resolution like we saw in ptn they will appoint a stabilizing agent this stabilizing agent will have a agreement with the promoters and the pre issue holders that you have, you have to lend up to maximum 15% then this uh, will be there that this fact that we are going to do a dis, uh, green shoe option is going to be exercised in the market this will have to be disclosed in the prospectus red earring prospectus any kind of material public should be informed then the period will start and he will start borrowing from the 
promoters so you will borrow from the promoters and start stabilizing the price now this entire stabilizing period will go on for maximum 30 days and moment the 30 days is over in the next two working days he has to return the shares to the promoters excess money will go into ipf and shares which could not be bought back will be separately allotted by the issuer at the issue price and will then be listed onto the stock market he is so i am done with green shoe option if i just show you the process also company obtains approval appoints stabilizing agent agreement with the stabilizing agent the stabilization uh, agent will have an agreement with the promoters for borrowing the shares he will open the bank accounts company over allots can you see this word over allots over allots means they will actually float 1 lakh 15000 shares in the market instead of 1 lakh then the trading commences and we will start seeing by success hai ki failure hai drop in prices so horrible ipo agar aa gaya if there is a horrible ipo so then the stabilizing agent moment is starts going below the issue price he will start buying he will borrow all the shares he will uh, buy all the shares whatever is there from the market he will then since he has bought all the shares he will be able in a position to return and the excess funds will be transferred to ipf account if it was a massive superb listing you the trade there was no drop in prices then the issuer will allot it to the stabilizing agent who will then return the shares to the promoters uh, and use the funds what was there in the green shoe option and give it to the issuer also and a separate application for listing has to be made onto the stock exchange is this clear now we are seeing the sums now good luck finance limited a listed company issued 20 lakh shares of rupees 180 each so what is the issue price 180 the company provided green, green shoe option and nominated nishan as a stabilizing agent okay the the coronavirus hit and consequently the post listing the share prices fell to 150 find out the quantum of the shares that can be bought by nishan so nishan that is a stabilizing agent can borrow maximum 15 percent from the promoters and 15 percent of the issue size so 20 lakhs ka 15 percent clear yahan tak 20 lakhs ka 15 percent is 3 lakh shares he can borrow maximum next state the provision for the balance of shares lying in the green shoe option account so whatever is the excess funds that lie in the green shoe option will go into where will be transferred to IEPF account. Is this clear? Now taking the second example, Raman issued shares, Raman Limited issued shares of 50 lakhs at a share price of 200 rupees. The company provided a green shoe option for stabilizing the price post listing. The issue was oversubscribed. Now it came as a very good thing. It decided to uh, decided that the stabilizing agent would borrow the maximum numbers permitted under regulation uh, the price is raised only 5 lakh shares could be bought back at 180 rupees so they are saying that he couldn't buy back everything he could buy back only uh, 5 lakhs you are required to calculate the number of shares that the stabilizing agent needs to borrow okay uh, in case at the time of allotment the responsibility of the issuer with respect to the shortfall while the green shoe option is there and the amount calculate the amount to be transferred to the IPF account very very important and very very interesting sum firstly it is happening case 3 where it was he was able to buy back so pehli cheese what is the question calculate the number of st stable uh, calculate the number of shares the stabilizing agent needs to borrow what is the maximum he can borrow? How much percentage? 15% of the issue size. So 15% of the issue size. So is ka nikalo 50 lakhs ka 15% kitna hua. So 7.5 lakhs he will borrow. Is this clear? Yes. Yeah. Then the second question. Uh, explain the responsibility of the issuer for the shortfall. 
now 50 uh, 7.5 lakhs he has borrowed but from the market he could buy back only 5 lakhs 2.5 lakh shares he could not buy back from the market because itne sellers hi nahi the sellers se 5 lakh jitne the only 5 lakh sellers were there so he bought back 5 lakh but he has to return 7.5 lakhs 2.5 lakhs is the excess so for that what the issuer will have to do issuer will have to additionally allot 2.5 lakhs at the issue price so 2.5 lakhs the company will have to allot and the price at which they will allot is at the issue price 200 pay they will allot and jitna bhi buyback bhi kiya 5 lakhs buyback bhi kiya so it was bought back at a cheaper price yes or no since it had fallen so below the issue price so he bought so fayda kitne ka hua how much benefit he had 20 rupees 200 was the issue price and he has bought it back at 180 so 20 rupees profit 20 into 5 lakhs so 20 into 5 lakhs is your 10 lakhs or how much is it 1 crore so 1 crore is the excess amount that profit which has to be transferred to IPF have you understood this this is the most advanced question of green shoe option that can ever come because it covers all the three cases. Now coming to the next question about the book building and calculating the book building price. This is again very 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 important to understand and very simple also. Now pay attention to this very clearly okay. A company a public issue has come and the public issue they want to allot how many shares. This is 15 lakh equity shares through book building. Is this clear? <laughs> Company wants to issue 15 lakh shares. They have kept a price band. They are asking the people, tell us you want to buy at 500, 510, 520, 600. You all start bidding. Now people if start bidding, let's say 500 only. And if allotment is done, decide that 600. Hai. So none of you all will get the allotment. So normally good companies people like to go for upper band only. Mil jane do 100 rupees ne kya jayega. So sometimes people like to bid on the upper band only. That agar allotment ne to confirm mil hi jayega. Okay. So this way people will start bidding. Now bidding is done. But is this the final price? This is the price band. What is the final price that is decided? So they are asking us now. From the following table shows the demand of securities at different levels. What should be the cutoff price? So they are asking us that we are the merchant bankers, we are the company secretaries, what price we should fix it at. Mujhe batao, what is the amount that they want to sell? How, how many shares do they want to sell in the market? 15 lakhs. 15 lakhs. But bids aay kitne? 34 lakhs ke. 34 lakhs 50,000. So if you add all of this, itna ye price pe itne number of investors ne itna demand kiya. So if I go to see as the price is increasing, I have the total number of bids from 500 to 600 at these levels, I got this much demand and it is a oversubscription. So I should be happy or sad? I'll be happy, I'll be like, are you wow, I mean, it's so good overbids. Now, what will the cut-off price? How much do I get out of it? 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 15 lakhs. I am seeing 15 lakhs where it will cover. So, cumulative will have to take. To understand 15 lakhs where it will hit. Yes or no? So, cumulative will have to take. We are seeing the number of shares. So, when I see serial number, the number of shares. First is 7 lakhs. Then, or 3 lakhs, 10 lakhs. Then, or 1 lakh 40,000. So, we are seeing the bid price also. And then this price. So we are trying to see at which price we can close the amount. So once we see that cumulative demand came at 15 lakhs. Yes or no? So at this way 600 onwards. Because our company tries to sell it at a good price. So they are finding that at this much. at If the company keeps 600. They are not able to sell 15 lakh shares. They will be able to sell only 7 lakh. So then they say let's 
go at 595 so we got 3.5 lakhs more so total 10 lakhs but fir bhi nahi hua apna so we'll further go to our lower lane we'll add it aise karte karte 575 pe apne sare 15 lakh nikal raha so from the price table it is clear that the demand is fulfilled at price 575 therefore this will be decided as the cut off price so normally what you need to do you need to reverse it you have to keep the highest bid price up 7 lakhs aa gaya then 3 lakh 50 keep doing it till you reach 1 lakh 50000 15 lakh shares is this clear so this is the best price that we are getting at which we can sell off all the 15 lakh equity shares is this clear yes or no yeah now the yeah. next yeah for the book building process in idea and the um, vso as well it's giving in the um, capital marketing and distribution because yeah it is the same always it is ca calculated and captured in this fashion only yeah now we see the uh, rp limited is planning to issue ipo in 2019 for which a draft letter of offer is proposed to be filled in september 2019 the following data is available with respect to the company they have given the net tangible assets net monetary assets and net worth so the of the past 3 years they have given they want to make a ipo in 2019 18 17 and 16 ka uh, नेट टैंजेबल एसेज मॉनिटरी एसेज नेटवर्क दिया हुआ एडवाइस द कंपनी वेदर दे कैन प्रोसीड विद दी आईपीओ सो दिस इज अगेन लीगल सम वील हैव टू फर्स्ट सी व्हाट प्रोविजन इज देयर सो दिस इज द प्रोविजन योर रेगुलेशन नंबर सिक्स ऑफ सेबी आईसीआर रेगुलेशन गिव यू द कंडीशन फॉर एलिजिबिलिटी रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर एन आईपीओ इट सेज दैट द प्रोविजन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू नेट टैंजेबल एसेज मॉनिटरी एसेज all of this is given as under eligibility for ipo the issuer should have a net tangible assets of at least 3 crores in each of the three full years so tell me one thing in each of the three full years does it have net tangible assets of 3 crores yes so here it is amounts in crores so in each of the three years they have 3 crore rupees so it's pretty good they this condition is fulfilled then of which not more than 50% should be held in monetary assets means whatever net tangible assets are there usme se maximum 50% can be held in cash monetary assets they want proper plant and machinery they want other everything in monetary assets is not good because it just shows that it's free cash only business ka so each of the three past years it should have three crores and out of which not more than 50% should be held in cash so let's see each one ka hum log dekh rahe kya 50% se zyada is in cash monetary net worth so in any of them is it more than 50% of the net uh, network net tangible assets no so net tangible assets is 5 lakh this ka 50% is 2.5 but the monetary assets is 1 so condition fulfilled uh, it is not more than 50% of the net tangible assets again ya yeah, 8 ka 4 hota hai 7 ka 3.5 so in all the cases it is less than 50% of the net tangible assets ye bhi condition fulfilled hoga next the issuer has a net worth of at least 1 crore in each of the Preceding three full years, so अभी net worth भी देखना पड़ेगा one crore. So obviously it is more. So this condition is fulfilled. So can they proceed with an IPO? They satisfy with all the conditions. Therefore they can proceed with an IPO. Is this clear? Would your answer be different if the monetary assets is four crores in two thousand sixteen seventeen? Sixteen seventeen में four crores है. So will your answer change? 
monetary assets in 1617 so it is still up to 4 crores here they are saying it should not be more so it's still okay in this case how would you deal if the monetary assets is 5 crores then it is allowed or not no, it cannot be more than up to 5 50% is okay it can still proceed with the ipo however in the last case it can't proceed with the ipo next again quick again this is a legal sum legal sum for which uh, means you need to know the law then you will be able to solve the sum pretty easily uh, after ipo equity shareholders promoters holding in a listed company is 140 crores theek hai the post issued equity capital is 600 crores the promoter group is holding holding includes acquired during the previous years so here they are saying the promoter holding includes 20% of shares allotment in consideration of transfer of technical know how and 10 crores of equity capital pledged with the bank whether the promoters is satisfying the minimum promoters contribution can you tell me what is the minimum promoter contribution percentage at least perfect so if you see as per regulation number 14 and regulation number 15 the minimum promoter contribution is at least 20% now iska tum 20% nikalo okay 20% nikalna padega is the minimum promoter contribution now this promoter is holding Uh, the promoter group is holding 140 crores, and the capital post issued capital is 600 crores. But one more information here: these 140 crores are, us me se 20 crores is held by equity shares allotted for transfer of no technical know how, and jo bhi equity shares diye hai, wo pledged hai. So regulation number 15, kya bol raha hai? Ye 20 percent to theek hai, but regulation number 15 kya bol raha hai? SEBI ICDR regulation 2018 that the following specified securities shall not be eligible to be computed for counting the promoter contribution one is if these have been acquired for consideration other than cash and it has been pledged with any of the creditors so both these cases have happened equity shares i have pledged the promoter has pledged so that is not allowed and the promoters have been allotted equity shares for consideration other than cash so both these cases should not be computed in the minimum promoter's contribution we want the promoter to actually contribute cash okay so total 140 crores promoter ka hai but ye 40 140 crores me se 20 and 10 nikal denge hum log because these two are ineligible to be computed in the promoter's contribution so it will come up to 110 crores yes or no yes. this is as per regulation 14 and 15 so actually the promoter group has 110 crores now i want to see whether it is 20% of 600 crores so 20% of 600 crores kitna hoga 120 is 120 crores however they are holding how much 110 so therefore the promoter is not satisfying the minimum promoter's contribution the next one is about warrants now warrants is also similar to a call option it is similar to a call option where warrants are generally given to promoters etc you know and to encourage them that uh, we are allotting warrants to you so what happens let's say there is a promoter company can allot warrants can allot warrants warrant is nothing but something like a shares okay so shares has been given share price will be mentioned that he, the share price is at 50 rupees the market price could be let's say 70 but he has an option he has an option to purchase it at 50 but after some time after one year after three months etc Clear till here. So what happens if he wants to go and he wants to get this option that he can buy it at fifty rupees? 
वुड यू वॉन्ट टू बाय टो नो यस यू वुड वॉन्ट टू बाय बट यू कॉन्ट एक्सरसाइज इट टूडे यू हैव टू वेट इन फ्यूचर यू विल से सेवेंटी रुपीज का अभी चल रहा है फ्यूचर में तो बढ़ेगा ही हंड्रेड टू हंड्रेड हो जाएगा एंड आई विल हैव अ राइट टू बाय दट फिफ्टी ओनली सो लेट मी गो एड लेट मी बाय द वॉरेंट्स तो यू बाय द वॉरेंट्स देर इज अ रूल दैट यू टू मिनिमम दैट यू टू पे इज मिनिमम ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑन इशू यू हैव टू पे सो ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ दिस हैज टू बी पेड एट द टाइम ऑफ इशू द बैलेंस बैलेंस कितना है कैन बी एक्सरसाइज लेटर वेन यू चूज टू रियली बाय क्लियर टू लियो सो फिफ्टी रुपीज वर्थ वी आर गिविंग यू वी डोंट नो वॉट इज द फ्यूचर प्राइस टूडे इज सेवेंटी टूडे वी आर टेलिंग यू दैट फिफ्टी ओनली यू कैन बाय बट नॉट नाउ लेटर You like this thing because you think that the share price might go really high, so you uh, plan to subscribe for it. You have to pay how much? Minimum twenty-five percent. Now let's see what happens in the future. Now in the future, it is possible that the share price goes up. It is a good situation, or the share price goes down. Yes or no? Yes or no? so when the share price went up let's say it went up to 150 would you exercise your option yes you will pay the balance 75% of 50 and you will say please take it give me the this and you will exercise it so worth 150 is a share market price you will get it for 50 rupees in total and therefore you made a gain of 100 rupees profit So whenever you want to exercise it, you will have to pay the balance seventy five percent. But what if it happened that it crashed? Market price is running way low. The the market the company didn't perform well, and the uh, this turned out to be thirty rupees. Would you want to pay the balance and buy it for fifty rupees? No. You paid. 25% of 50 already and now would you pay the 75% you would say no i don't want it why will i want i don't want to pay so that 25% will get forfeited am i clear to you if you choose not to exercise it your this amount is forfeited so this is like a double gain or for the promoters also it's like a carrot that you're giving if the share price goes high you will be very very profitable but also there should be a stick involved that if it falls then your 25% is lost understood the concept of warrants yes these warrants are given to certain specific people who we feel that you know they can really drive the company and we want to attract them and retain them so govind uh, limited proposed to issue 20 lakh share warrants to its promoters the share warrants given option to buy i told you it's like a call option option to buy shares at a pre determined price the price trend of the company is given as below closing price on the relevant date is 250 the weekly high and low is this much and this is this much you are required the to identify the minimum price at which the share warrant should be issued now again there is this minimum price at which share warrants are issued again it's a uh, it is a, a legal uh, sum where you should first know the law the law says as per regulation 164 the price equity share price should not be uh, issued very low so the preferential issue that you are giving the issue that you are doing the price should not be lesser than the average weekly high and low of the past 26 weeks or the past 2 weeks So in the past 26 weeks they have given is 275 and in the past 2 weeks is 280. So we can issue it at a not lower than what amount? Two eighty. So here they have also said because when you are giving to promoters we cannot give them at a dirt free, dirt cheap price. They set a minimum value that price should not be lesser than these two figures higher of the following. 
सो दोनों के हायर जो भी है दैट विल बी सिलेक्टेड एंड यू कैनॉट लोअर इश्यू शेयर बिलो दैट अमाउंट देन Calculate the amount payable by the promoters at the time of allotment of the warrant. At the time of allotment, how much do they have to pay? Twenty-five percent. Twenty-five percent. So we found the if we figured that we, it is issued at two eighty. So two eighty into how many have been allotted to him? Into twenty lakhs have been like these have been issued to them, and twenty-five percent of that. Is the minimum price. Let's see. So therefore, we go to see. It will be twenty five percent of two eighty rupees. That is seventy five seventy rupees. So seventy rupees, and there are twenty lakhs issued such like that. So it will be your fourteen crores is the total amount that the promoters have to pay upfront. And that. Now we'll be seeing your other sums on ICDR regulations 2018. Here, let's read. For this, you will have to know the provisions, and then the sums are very simple. So these are legal sums. Legal sums are basically, if you know the law, the sum is very simple. Now, Actin Edge Limited, a unlisted company, is process is in the process of expanding its business. For expansion, it needs 200 crores. For raising 200 crores, it has decided to go for an IPO through book building mechanism. The it has fixed a price band of 500 to 600. So, an issue is coming, right? And they are asking the people to bid. And what price are they ready to uh, buy at between these range? Referring to the ICDR regulations 2018, advice on the following. So, one thing I have understood: the company needs 200 crores. And uh, they have ready to sell their shares between 500 to 600, and asking the people to bid. Now, what is the minimum application value and the minimum number of shares in one application? Now, for this, you will have to know what is the minimum application value, which is the law. Now, the law is very simple. As per Regulation Number 47, read with Regulation Number 143. application and minimum application value the issuer shall stipulate in the offer document the minimum application size and uh, which shall fall within the range of 10000 to 15000 rupees so what is the minimum value that a issuer can set minimum 10 and maximum 15000 clear till here If I want to apply in an IPO, can I apply with ten rupees? No. So minimum ten thousand. And company saying that can can I say minimum application value is fifteen lakhs? No. So then they have said the range should be company can decide na minimum application value. So they can either keep a ten thousand or fifteen thousand or somewhere in between. So in the question they have asked you, the law is pretty simple. This is the minimum application value, ten to fifteen thousand. They can keep it. Now the question they are saying that how many shares will they get? See the question. What should be the minimum application value between ten thousand to fifteen thousand? The company can decide. And the minimum number of shares in each application that I can apply. Now if ten thousand is there and this price band is there, then minimum how many shares can I apply for? Do you understand? If the lower band is 500, so and let's say they are setting it as 10,000, so then what will be it? So let's see. पहले हम लोग देखते हैं कि अगर company ने 10,000 rupees fix किया, let's say we have decided that the company has a they have fixed the minimum number of shares. In each case, we are going to see that the minimum application value should not cross 10,000. The limit of ten thousand to fifteen thousand, not below ten and not more than fifteen. So let's see what is the minimum application of shares that one will need. First, I am going to take that the company has set the application size as or ten thousand. Okay, so at five hundred level, at a lower band, at we are going to see at ten thousand level lower band, what is, and at upper band at 
सिक्स हंड्रेड लेवल का है सो योर एट टेन थाउजेंड सो एक शेयर लोअर बैंड का कितना रख रहे हैं हम लोग फाइव हंड्रेड ऐसे टेन थाउजेंड शेयर है तो मुझे मिनिमम ट्वेंटी के लिए अप्लाई करना पड़ेगा यहां तक समझ में आया मीन्स एक शेयर एट लोअर बैंड इज फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज ऐसा वो लोग ने मिनिमम एप्लीकेशन वैल्यू टेन थाउजेंड रखा है तो मुझे मिनिमम ट्वेंटी शेयर अप्लाई करना पड़ेगा इफ द कंपनी डिसाइड दैट एट फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज दे आर कीपिंग द लोअर बैंड एज फाइव हंड्रेड एंड द एप्लीकेशन साइज दे आर सेंग लेट्स कीप इट फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड सो दैट टाइम इन दिस सिनारियो इट विल बी थर्टी शेयर दैट यू है तो लोअर बैंड इज 500 तो 10000 में कितने मिलेंगे 500 के हिसाब से या 15000 रख रहे तो 500 के हिसाब से कितने अप्लाई करने पड़ेंगे नाउ वी आर सीइंग द अपर बैंड अपर बैंड देख रहे तो अगर अपर बैंड है तो वही अगर कंपनी ने डिसाइड किया 10000 रख रहे तो अपर बैंड में 17 शेयर के लिए अप्लाई कर सकते एंड इफ देर इज सिक्स एट अपर बैंड में एंड दे आर कीपिंग द एप्लीकेशन प्राइस फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड दे विल अप्लाई For 25 shares means what? Let's understand. At lower price band, at 10,000, 15,000, they've given you, and at uh, upper band, this is the uh, 10,000, 15,000 they've given you. You can other way round. You can also look at it this way that if a company has set 10,000 rupees, then at lower band, if you are applying, you are saying you wanted for two. 500. So you will apply for how much? 20 shares. Okay. Or वैसे ही अगर तुम 600 पे कितना होगा? 17 share. समझ में आया? 10,000 के value set किया तो. So at 10,000, at 10,000 you can apply at 500 or 600. For 500 if you apply you will get 20 shares. For 600 if you apply you will get 17 shares. If company said नहीं नहीं टेन थाउजेंड नहीं रखेंगे पंद्रह हजार मिनिमम एप्लीकेशन वैल्यू रखते तो पंद्रह हजार पे प्राइस बैंड कंपनी ने फाइव हंड्रेड टू सिक्स हंड्रेड सेट किया है यस और नो सो पंद्रह हजार पे फाइव हंड्रेड अगर सेट कर रहे हैं एक शेयर फाइव हंड्रेड का तो पंद्रह हजार में कितने मिलेंगे कितने मिलेंगे थर्टी बट अगर छो छो डिसाइड किया ना यार चलो बिट कर दे सिक्स हंड्रेड डिसाइड कर दे सो देन तुमको ट्वेंटी फाइव शेयर मिलेंगे ना ऑब्वियसली इन्वेस्टर को रेंज देते हैं फाइव हंड्रेड एंड सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड द इन्वेस्टर कैन डिसाइड वेदर यू वांट्स टू गो फाइव हंड्रेड और सिक्स हंड्रेड और एनी अदर फिगर बिटवीन दिस रेंज सो द इन्वेस्टर विल डिसाइड दिस वॉट बिडिंग रेंज हैज बीन गिवेन अमाउंट आई विल डिसाइड द मिनिमम एप्लीकेशन वैल्यू हु डिसाइड Whether it will be ten thousand or fifteen thousand, that who will decide what will be the minimum application's value. The company will the company will decide whether the application value is ten thousand or fifteen thousand. Okay, so they will say that the minimum application value of in this case is ten thousand rupees. So then it will be twenty and seventeen. But if the company decides the minimum application value is fifteen thousand, then it, then the case will be thirty and twenty five. Have you understood clearly? Yes. Yeah. And then again, one more legal uh, provision is there that remember you uh, in our twelfth or in commerce we had done there was first call. First is the application amount. Then comes the first call, second call, final call. Yes or no? <laughs> सेम वे सबसे पहले आता है एप्लीकेशन मिनिमम सम पेबल ऑन एप्लीकेशन सो पहले एप्लीकेशन के टाइम पे हाउ मच यू टू पे सो योर अगेन द लॉस एज दैट मिनिमम वी कैन आस्क और मिनिमम वी हैव टू आस्क इज हाउ मच एट लीस्ट ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द इश्यू प्राइस सो दिस इज अगेन द लॉ और द प्रोविजन दैट मिनिमम इज ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट दैट वी हैव टू आस्क ऑफ द इश्यू प्राइस इज इन द एप्लीकेशन अमाउंट Okay, then they say the period of subscription. Now, period of subscription, they are saying in the IPO, 
IPO period will be for a limited period, like how we have offer period is for this much time. So your also IPO is kept open for three to ten working days. For minimum three, maximum ten working days. In case the company has revised the price band, they can extend the bidding period for a minimum of three working days. Now, why will they extend? Maybe the company must have faced some force major, or uh, you know, or company just decides to revise the brand. So they can give additional three working days, or if there is any kind of strike, force major means act of God, for whatever reason there was a uh, war, any kind of external aggression, strike, lockout, uh, any kind. So in that case, the issuer may, again, if he wants, he can uh, extend the period for minimum three working days. So normal time period is three to ten. And for in, and for extension, it is more three working days. Is this clear? That is it. We are done with this. Time.